the ball game from. There's plenty of seating. There's plenty of room to stand around on the top of the bowl. Just it's going to be a great day for a good football game. And I'll tell you, what, I was talking to uh, one of the men that uh, was uh, doing the tickets out at the, at the front gate as the cars were coming through, and he told me that cars were set up here Thursday, that people had already come out here to park on Thursday to get ready for this ball game. And they park all the way around the bowl. Uh, it seems like it's kind of like church where people sit in the back pew or the front pew. It's about the same here. <laughs> Everybody has a position where they always put their cars at. Again, it just goes back for a number of years. And, uh, Russ, we were in Star County last night, had an excellent game there. Uh, Star County and Rova, Star County's homecoming, so it's almost like a homecoming weekend here for us. Uh, terrific game, uh, momentum shift, maybe not even just quarter to quarter, but even from series to series. And it came all the way down to the last play, uh, play of the ball game like it has for these two teams the last few years. Yeah, uh, two very talented teams, uh, different uh, style uh, in that uh, Star County is just so big and, and so strong. Uh, Rova was probably a, a little bit smaller, but uh, much, I, I think, much quicker. And uh, wonderful football game. They, they didn't leave much left out on the field. They, uh, they, they put it all out there. And uh, it's unfortunate, uh, as well as both teams played, that one of them had to lose. But uh, Star County, County came out 28-21. And, and quite honestly, uh, uh, Rover was down on the 20-yard line, put the ball in the end zone the last play, didn't get to complete the pass. but. Uh, had, they had marched very uh, long ways up the field with very little time to put themselves in the position to tie it, uh, executed very well, and, and just an outstanding football game between two very good teams. And those two teams have both fallen this year to Cambridge. That gave them each their first loss. Cambridge able to take out both Star County and Rova while Rova was ranked this year. Uh, that has moved Cambridge into the top ten in uh, the state in Class 1A. And uh, I know uh, Russ has uh, some interesting figures. We talked about it last night, but uh, you've got some playoff positions, and, and Cambridge is in good position right now uh, for the playoffs. Yeah, they are, and, and uh, they, as an undefeated team, they have the fewest playoff points, and that's going to hurt them. But clearly you want to be in the top eight, because uh, in the top eight you get seated and you have the lower seats coming to you. And right now uh, they are uh, seated number nine uh, by playoff points. Uh, Rova last night going into the game was 13 with a five and one record that's going to with a four and two record they're going to obviously drop down uh that'll make it tougher on them they're probably going to go visit somebody star county with the victory uh, kept kept themselves in the top 16 and uh again will probably uh, have someone uh, come to their house the first game and that first game in the playoffs especially for teams that haven't played in the playoffs for a while is pretty important to get somebody to come to your place and star county has been in both teams star county and rose have been in the playoffs several years uh but Maybe more important to Cambridge, they've been out for a few years and looking to get back in. And I'll tell you what, a fabulous team to get back in with it so far. What we're going to do here on the Hawk in WGEN AM 1500, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking with Coach Larry Stahl, the Cambridge Vikings, and Coach Tom Buck of the Weathersfield Flying East. Then we'll come back, talk about the game some more with Russ Bullhouse and Dan Golly. You're listening to LCC High School Football right here on AM 1500 WGEN and 102.5 The Hawk. See the best and forget the rest. This is Mark Wilson at Kiwani Auto Land in Kiwani, and you need to stop today and see us for the best deal on the best pre-owned cars, trucks, vans, and 4x4s in the Tri-County area. We'll get you the lowest payments available, and if your credit isn't the best, Kiwani Auto Land is the best place for you to go. We have a great selection of cars that will fit your budget. Are you tired of high service rates? Forget the rest. See Kiwani Auto Land today. Our rates are extremely low, and we do oil and filter changes for $14.95 on most models. If you want the most for your money, see the best at Kiwani Auto Land and forget the rest. Stop today. We're located between Super Walmart and Community State Bank on Penny Street in Kiwani. Or call 852 Auto. That's 852 Auto for the best deals around. Welcome back to AM 1500 WGEN and 102.5 The Hawk. I'm Jason Bates. We're now talking with Cambridge head coach Larry Stahl. And uh, thanks, coach, for taking the time to be with us today. Glad to do it. Hey, a lot of expectations were placed on the shoulders of your players this year. Um, you know, you're still undefeated. And after beating both Rova and Star County earlier this year, I imagine you're pretty proud of the way your players have responded to that pressure of those expectations. Okay, you know, we like you said, come out with uh, certain goals in mind, and one of them was trying to go undefeated like these kids have as sophomores the last uh, couple of seasons, and uh, 
we knew everybody would be kind of looking at us as one of the major teams to beat in the Rover game and Stark County game were both major hurdles. They were both tight ball games against two good ball clubs, and uh, we were fortunate enough to end up on top in both of them. We were just, you know, very, very pleased to be 6-0 where we're at. And, uh, of course, every game during the season is important, but with the tradition of Saturday Cambridge homecoming, uh, Weathersfield coming into town, there's a little history there, and the fact that the undefeated record is still on the line, there's a lot riding on today's contest. I'll tell you, and there's nothing to sneeze at. We were fortunate two weeks ago when we had that uh, big grain delay at Princeville, but we're still fortunate enough to get the game finished by going continuous clock. You know, Rover and, and uh, Weathersfield uh, weren't fortunate to get that done, so we were able to go over on uh, Saturday afternoon the following day and watch the second half of that ball game, and Weathersfield give them a heck of a run for their money. So, uh, you know, we're, we're I think, with this team smart enough to to see that they you know are capable of of uh beating any of the you know powerhouses as far as our side was concerned and uh you know they're sitting as a spoiler they've got uh, a situation where they've got to win out to maybe have a chance of making playoffs themselves and uh you know it'd be a feather in their cap to, to get us when we we're sitting six and oh so uh they're certainly, I'm sure, going to be out to get us and probably pull out all the stops, and uh, we're going to go in and have to prepare real hard and try and be ready for anything. Now, uh, after evaluating what has already transpired this season, uh, Coach Stahl, what do, what do you like most about this team? Well, the, the, we've always said on our offense the diversity. You know, we've got, you know, Kill comes to mind right off the bat as far as our outside threat and, and uh, you know, going to get the big gainers once in a while and, and hit the home run for you, which he has done all year long, but, uh, you know, if if he's not doing it, we've got Happy going the other way and still averaging uh, six or seven yards of carry and Melton up to Patu when we need him because we have been successful outside and or need a, you know, a, a few yards on the grunt end of things right up, up the uh, middle of the line. He's averaging, you know, five or so, and it just they can't watch one guy. If they do, they're going to get themselves in trouble. Uh, if there's anything we'd like to work on a little more, it would be the pass end of things. And uh, part of that's been because, you know, we've had some scores that have been lopsided enough that we didn't throw. And uh, some of the games that we've been real tight in, our running game was going good enough that we didn't feel that we needed to throw. And, uh, you know, we always have, have liked to throw the play-action passes when they're not expecting it rather than obviously ever getting in a position where you've got to throw the ball. But uh, something we need to work on between now and when the playoffs come is, is going to be our pass game. But, uh, you know, we've got, as far as the percentage of passes that we've completed, um, a lot of them have been for the home run, too. So uh, we're real pleased with where we're at. We know that this week we're going to have to be very concerned with uh, you know, a kid like Byler Bresky back there. On, uh, they're veering off tackle type stuff and uh, the quarterback Johnson who was uh, you know, Lincoln Trail quarterback shared the honors as a sophomore last year uh, you know, has good composure back there and uh, got a couple of good receivers he can throw to other than Lyle Bresky and I'm sure after uh, last week uh, Star County had a series in the second half that we were playing tight enough we got in a little trouble on a couple of option plays and had to make some adjustments and you know, whether show goes ahead and runs plenty of option anyway, I'm sure they'll come out with a little more of that than we might be accustomed to seeing. So we're going to work all this week on uh, trying to cover that uh, a little better than we have and, and make that adjustment right at the beginning of the ball game, and hopefully it'll, it'll help us to get things done. And uh, and you mentioned you'd like to look, work a little more in your passing game, but uh, uh, is, is there anything else you feel that needs to, to be worked on uh, during the rest of the season? You know, as far as this week's concerned, you know, we're taking one game at a time. We uh, haven't run against a 4-4 yet, and I'm sure whether Shield will mix it up with a six-man front and a 4-4. And when they do go into that, they are quite apt to stun a linebacker or two here and there, and we've got to make sure that we uh, you know, get those kids picked up. And, and uh, if you do end up busting through, you got a good chance of getting some major yardage and getting that home run. But uh, I think the key as far as this week... You know, like I said, take care of Byron Bresky, uh, try and get good pass rush on and coverage, and go ahead and keep that option down. The weather's going to maybe make a big difference the way they're talking on to what they're going to be able to do as well as us, you know, in reference to possibly throwing the ball. They're talking to being pretty nasty. But, uh, 
after we get done with this one, you know, we don't like to think that far ahead, but, uh, you know, we're going to play Alwood and then an Alexis Ball Club where maybe we'll get a chance to do a couple other things there that, you know, that'll play-wise maybe surprise somebody in the playoffs if it comes down to that where it gets to a tight ball game or whatever. But we'll worry about that when the time comes for now as we're concerned with trying to take care of Weathersfield and getting their undefeated season still intact. And, you know, we don't want to share that conference title with anybody. And uh, last question for you here, Coach. A little bit of fun with this one. And, and, of course, we won't say how many years you've been at Cambridge, but you've been there a number of years. And it's always seemed to me uh, something about Cambridge homecoming on, on, a, on a Saturday has always been something special. I was wondering if you could put it in your own words or, or even your players' words on, on what, a, what a, the Saturday homecomings mean to you guys. Well, I'll tell you, the, the kids really look forward to it. Obviously, the community does. It's nice to be able to have that period in the morning. And then, you know, you got the big football game in the afternoon, and then there's various things going on that evening. From a coaching point of view, it's, <laughs> it's kind of a pain in the rear. You, you get out of sync a little bit. you got the extra day of practice. Uh, you've got the concern that they're not in school like they normally are playing a Friday night ball game. But, uh, you know, our kids are used to doing it more so than the, the opposition that we play. And it does give us a, a little bit of an edge in possibly going into a playoff situation where you might have a Saturday afternoon game rather than Friday. And, and this year is kind of unique being as uh, Alwood's got trouble with lights over there. We're uh, going to get to do it two weeks in a row. We're going to have to play over there on a Saturday afternoon uh, the following week after homecoming, too. So, you know, the kids are looking forward to it. Uh, like I say, I know the community is and uh, homecoming it's it's always a nice one to get and this year will be uh especially so under the circumstances hey well best of luck today coach Stahl, and uh thanks once again for being with us today and good luck throughout the season thank you thank you that was coach larry Stahl with the cambridge vikings and we now turn to weathershield head coach tom buck and uh coach buck and uh, so far this season, it looked like uh, the day started out a little slow, but over the last few weeks, uh, your team has really picked up the pace here. Well, we we've been we were real up and down the first uh, first part of the season. Uh, you know, we'd win big games, then we'd we'd lose real close games to uh, you know to Stark County and to Rova, and and uh, you know it's but the thing that we've been kind of pleased with the kids have gotten better here the last two three weeks, and they're playing better and. And, uh, you know, we think we've got a chance today. And uh, for, for our listeners, uh, I guess, uh, uh, who are some of the new additions to your team this year? Well, of course, we're, you know, we're coming back with, with uh, Jared Johnson, a quarterback. He had a nice, nice uh, year, his sophomore year, and was an all-conference player. Uh, he's been hollered a little bit by an ankle this year and, and maybe hasn't done quite as well as he did last year, but he's, you know, he's been getting better and, and uh, we've got Scott Barbreski back at, at our wing back spot. Um, Court Jackson and Seth Feldner splitting time at the halfback position. Uh, we feel like our offensive line is pretty quick with Scott Durecki and and Josh Hampton and Wade Workheiser up there. Um, you know, and actually we're still fairly young. Uh, we've got quite a few juniors and some sophomores that play um, both on offense and defense. So. You know, we're we're uh, we're pretty we're kind of pleased with the way things have gone. There's a couple of games that we thought could have gone the other way, but you can't can't worry about those kind of things. Uh, you just got to try to play for today, and and obviously we've got to win out. And this is a real tough tough test for us today. So we'll just have to see what happens. Well, has there been any changes over this year as far as uh, anything in the offense or the defense that you guys are doing as opposed to previous years? No, not really. Uh, we put in uh, we put in more of a traditional um, wing T. We've run wing T for years, but we changed terminology, you know, last year, and that worked out pretty well, and we're staying with that. And uh, de Defensively, we're still basically running 4-4 uh, running four, four kind of stuff, so uh, really not not really many changes at all. And with winding down the season, of course, uh, going for that playoff spot, uh, I, I guess so far over the course of the year, has there been any pleasant surprises for you? Well, Actually, we, you know, we've, we've been a little bit concerned with, uh, at least earlier in the, year, the first half of the year, where we would be one or two plays short against, you know, what, what I guess would be called the, the uh, upper echelon of the, of the division, uh, Stark County, Rova, 
uh, and now Cambridge, and uh, you know that those games hurt because you know when we drop that first one to Westmer uh, by a point, uh, you know that means you know right now we have to we have to win the remainder of our games to get in the playoffs, and and uh, that makes it kind of you know our backs are the wall. It's a real challenge for us. But again, you know we think uh, we've been playing better here the last couple of weeks. We think we've got a chance. And uh, specifically now, Cambridge, a lot of people did expect uh, Cambridge to have a good year, and they've kind of uh, went ahead and, and uh, answered those critics and, and, and did that. Um, not so much critics, but uh, they went ahead and answered the call uh, with that prediction. Uh, I, I guess, uh, what, what is it that you see with the Vikings this year, and how does that translate into uh, the ball game uh, with Weathersfield? Well, they, they've had an excellent group of kids, you know, for two, three years now. They've, they've always, you know, won the for a soft conference and and have gone undefeated at that level and and uh, you know they were kind of looking to this group as the group that that they thought was going to give them a a real chance uh, to win the conference and maybe go deep into the playoffs and and they had, that's certainly been the reality at this point they've got uh, they've got you know average size uh, for a one A team uh, but the kids their kids you know spend a lot of time in the weight room they're real strong they've got great quickness with uh, you know Cale Jasper he's just a, got tremendously quick feet he's fast and and uh, you know Melton the fullback is their is their power back and and uh, and then you got Happick who has speed and strength and uh, and he you know you can't you can't coach that. I mean, he, you know, they've just got a real, uh, real nice backfield. Uh, their quarterback, I think, was runner-up last year in an all-conference voting, um, and uh, you know, he does a great job. So, you know, they really got it all. They play tremendous defense. They they haven't given up very many points at all this year, and uh, they get to the ball, and and you know, they they really have everything that you look for in a one A team, and. And, uh, you know, obviously we're going to have our hands full and we just want to be able to, you know, play with them. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll get lucky and steal one. And, and two questions for you, Coach. Along the same line on different sides of the ball, um, you mentioned those, those running backs from Cambridge. What is it specifically that Weathersfield needs to do in the ball game then to, to stop that running game? Well, we just need, we need to play the aggressive style of defense that we've been playing all year and, and you know, try not to let them get big plays and and you know basically you know when you really get down to it 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 basically boils down to blocking and tackling and and uh you know if we we feel like we've done a pretty decent job of that this year on the defensive side of the ball so um we'll see uh we'll see if we can't uh, play with the vikings today and you're basically the same answer uh, going your way then offensively yeah um you know we've been able to uh put long drives together and and uh, you know we've been able to throw the ball some this year uh, when we uh, when we needed to, and and to balance our offense up a little bit, and, and uh, especially last week we were able to put it up a little bit and have some success. So you know it, uh, we're really pretty similar in terms of offensive styles, uh, and you know we've been kind of looking at ourselves from when we look at their offense. So you know we'll just. Uh, Kind of basically see what happens today. And well, uh, tell you what, you very much enjoyed over the years watching uh, Wonderful football. We've had a nice tradition over the years, and uh, best of luck in this game, and also uh, here with the rest of the season. Thanks very much. Thank you. That was Coach Tom Buck with the Wonderful Flying Geese. We'll have more right here on the Hawk after this. Hi, this is Dan Bryan of Advanced Rehabilitation Services in Kiwani. The Advanced Rehab, Marlene Gunning, and myself are dedicated to delivering the highest quality, most effective treatments targeted to your specific needs. Being your area's only sports-certified specialist through the American Physical Therapy Association and certified clinician in mechanical diagnosis and therapy of the spine through the McKenzie Institute allows me to provide state-of-the-art, up-to-date physical therapy procedures to clients receiving services from Advanced Rehab. A certified massage therapist is also on site and available for appointments to facilitate the rehabilitation process. Just as important as your choice for physician, your choice for physical and occupational therapy is equally important and is your right. Ask your physician about how physical therapy can benefit your recovery from injury and ask for advanced rehab services. Call for appointment at 853-5500. We look forward to serving your needs. 
Age does have its rewards. When you hear the news about Pekin Insurance's 45 plus auto discount, you'll be glad you have a few years behind you. Stinson Insurance in Cambridge wants to tell you how easy it is to save money on your auto insurance if you're 45 years or more. Stinson Insurance Agency and Pekin Insurance offers you this special discount earlier than some other insurance companies. Should you have a claim, you'll get great service too. Call Stinson Insurance at 937-2453 about the 45-plus auto discount. Thank you for calling information. May I help you? Yeah, I need an address or phone number for my pharmacy. It's drugsrs.com. I'm sorry, there's no address or phone number for them. They are just a .com. But I need to speak to a pharmacist. I'm sorry, they are just a .com. There's no real location where they can help you. The Bravo Pharmacy is a real pharmacy with an actual address and phone number, but also have a website. Visit GalvaPharmacy.com or stop by 358 Front Street in Galva or call 932-3440. The Galva Pharmacy, where service is a tradition, even on the Internet. <laughs> Either way, uh, I guess, what, what's the official word, Dan? Bull or a horseshoe? Been here for 42 years, but it's a bull. Okay, it's a bull. That's where we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Hey, just just to let people know what, what happened last night in, in around the area as far as football games go, uh, Stark County defeated Rover last night. We talked about that, 28-21, to 21, all the way down to the last second of the ball game to that one go. Uh, Princeville defeated Galva 34-6. to 6. Of course, Cambridge and Wethersfield playing this afternoon as well as uh, Westmer and Alexis, Warren and Alwood. And the interesting one here is Anawan and Union, and, and uh, I saw that one was postponed. Apparently, uh, we're hearing now canceled, but they had a little problem last night. My understanding is that uh, Anawan went all the way to Union for Union's homecoming. Everybody showed up, both teams, uh, both, uh, both sets of fans, the only people didn't show up were the referees. <laughs> and uh, they've canceled the game, and I guess they're not going to, not going to play it. And, that has to be very disappointing for the end one fans to travel an hour and a half and find out their kids aren't going to get to play. It's a little difficult to, to run a ball game in that situation. You know, I, you got to kind of feel for Union Big uh, too. It's their homecoming. It, you know, kind of takes a little bit off the festivities when there's not a, a ball game before the before the weekend starts there. So. Yeah, so, so homecoming, apparently, uh, you don't have to worry about a loss or a win this year for Union. Is, uh, they just won't have the ball game, but uh, we have the ball game here today. As uh, we're getting close to kickoff, apparently Cambridge will be on the receiving end. Weatherford won the toss and deferred, so that's how it shapes up right now. And looking now specifically at this game, we saw we saw a power fullback last night in Dan Hall, and now uh, an electrifying group of running backs for Cambridge in the backfield. And you have to start off with Kale Jasper. Uh, Kale Jasper is probably the quickest uh, running back in the conference this year. I don't think there's any dispute on that. Uh, He's a big, big uh, play runner, uh, but he's had a lot of help, and I don't know. Like, like uh, Paul uh, down at Rova, uh, he he was athlete of the week in the area last week down in Galesburg, and all he could talk about in the write-up was his line. And and you you aren't a good running back, or you aren't a great running back without an outstanding offensive line. And obviously, they've they've had uh, uh, not just one or two players on this team to go undefeated thus far, and a very good Lincoln Trail. They've had, uh, had a good depth and, and good line play as well. And you had uh, two Jasper in the backfield, Happich and uh, Melton, the fullback. Plus, uh, Nate Skelton can get around the end, too, as well. And those guys up front, I'll tell you what, uh, that's uh, Castile, Hancock, Shoemaker, Briggs, Brewer, Broadston, and Johnston. And uh, coming in also Latrell for that. And, and like, like uh, Russ said, you can't get downfield and Jasper can't make those runs and break those downfield tackles if he doesn't get the initial push up front. I'd like to say the one thing with Noah Melton, he's really one of the fastest kids on the team, plus he's in the weight room all year long. He just doesn't get to see the ball when you got Happick and Jasper sitting side by side, but he's a real workhorse when he does get the ball. He can make things happen also. He just doesn't get the chances or the touches that the other two do. Well, then, taking a look at Winnesota, I uh, haven't had a chance to see them personally this year, but uh, they've had good teams in the past, a lot of playoff history with this team as well. Um, a little bit younger team this year, maybe uh, some, some young guys coming up and throwing some holes, but overall a pretty balanced senior, uh, a varsity upperclassmen and youth mixed here on Wethersfield. And uh, we will take a look at Wethersfield and, and give you the starting lineups here in just a second as the players on the field are being announced. And uh, one thing we can talk about with Wethersfield is uh, we, we've talked about Cambridge, but uh, Wethersfield right now is fighting 
for their playoff lies, their playoff start today. Yeah, they're they're three and three right now, and they have to win this game. No time in history, I think only one time in history that I'm aware of, did a five and four team get in the playoff, and they went undefeated in their side of the conference. So uh, they have to uh, they have to win tonight today, and uh, they do play. Anne Ryan and Alwood the last two games of the season as does Cambridge. They play an opposite the opposite evening. So uh, they have to get by today with a win if, the, if they're going to have a chance at the playoffs uh, this year for Wethersfield. And we will go ahead and take a look at the starting lineups now. And uh, starting first with Cambridge on offense, you'll have uh, at your end positions 5'10", 185 pound senior Travis Castile. The other end will be number 21 Brandon Johnson, 5'10", 150 pound junior. He will sub in and out carrying in the plays with Luke Luttrell, a 6'160 pound junior. Your tackles, Nick Hancock, 6'1", 190 pound junior. Another junior, Jesse Bobson, 5'11", 160 pound. And uh, your guards, Ross Shoemaker, 6'3", 185 junior. Jared Brewer, 5'9", 180 senior. Your center, Ben Briggs, 6'2", 200 senior. And in the backfield, Skelton, Nate Skelton, 6'1", 155-pound junior quarterback. Your halfbacks include Tyler Hafick at 6'1", 190. He's a junior. Cale Jasper, the senior, 5'9", 155. And at fullback, your senior, Noah Melton, at 5'10", 190. Starting on defense for Weatherfield in the 4-4 stack defense, the two defense ends are Levi Lepke and Scott Derricki. Uh, the two tackles are Ray Koo and Josh Hampton. The linebackers are Wade Wilkeiser, Kyle Moore, Nathan Rashid, and Court Jackson. And the DBs are Chris Lemke, Scott Balabeski, and Eric Buck. So that's how that shapes up with the opening lineups as Weathersfield Cambridge getting set for the opening kickoff. And back deep for Cambridge now, you see Jasper back there. We also see, looking across the line, it looks like Happick back there as well. Now the kick is towards Jasper, fielded at about the 10-yard line. He picks it up, trying to move it to the right-hand side, and he is tackled, tripped up and tackled down just past the 10-yard line. Looks like they may have started at the 12. Nice open field tackle by number 53, Wade Werkheiser for Weathersfield. Uh, made a nice drop on the man and, and really put uh, Cambridge back on the 13-yard line in, in a tough position going against the wind. So Cambridge now going to start out on their own 13-yard line, first and 10. Wethersfield defense setting up. They've got four men up front, just what Coach Stahl said they would. Jasper on the right wing. Skelton down, barking a call. Jasper in motion the other side. Now handoff over the right guard to Happick, and he's breaking a tackle out past the 20-yard line down, maybe about the 23-yard line before he's drugged down. Nice run, nice cut. He got through the, got through the hole and cut it out to the outside, made a nice run, and, and there was a, a tackle uh, by Weathersfield. It looked like Court Jackson made the tackle, uh, but a big hole, and Weathersfield did not let that happen very long, or this is going to be over in a hurry. Back up to the line now is Cambridge, first and 10 again from the 28, and uh, Skelton down now, getting the play set. And it's going to be a handoff to Jasper on the left-hand side over guard, and he may be picked up about two on the play, making it to about the 30-yard line before he is taken down. And again, tackle by Wurkheiser and uh, number 35 by Lebeski for uh, Wethersfield. So second down and eight now for the Vikings on their 31. That wing look from Cambridge. Wethersfield staying in their base four. Linebacker on the outside creeps up. Now we got Jasper in motion, handoff to Happick, back over the right guard again, going back and forth, and he gets near a first down. And he makes it by about a yard. Nice hole. They've discovered something. Cambridge has discovered something over that right tackle, right guard. Uh, it looks like they have a quick trap on the inside man. They get out on that inside linebacker, and uh, there's definitely some work going on here on the right side of the offensive line. Cambridge looking good this opening series. Yeah, Kappik's done a nice job. He's just kind of picking and weaving his way through there. He's always done a fine job. He's following those offensive guards, leading uh -huh. way through the holes, too. And one thing about Happick, he's got some speed, too. Don't let him fool you. Now handoff right up the middle to Melton over the center, and he's blowing his way close to another first down. Uh, what, that's just pure power. There wasn't much of a hole there, but he carried Court Jackson, number 25, for Weathersfield on his back and carried him up the field for about five or six yards extra. Uh, Cole Jackson made contact in the, in the uh, hole, but uh, just kept his legs driving and carried him up the field. 
So second and two from the 47-yard line, the Cambridge side of the field, 10-10 to go in this first quarter. No melt or Skelton is down under center. Now hand off to Jasper out of an eye look. He gets around the right hand side, breaks a couple tackles and fights past the first down. Pickup of about five yards. And tackles by Weathersfield, uh, Kyle Moore and number two Eric Buck made a nice play defensively, but uh, he, they're giving up uh, six, seven yards a run here uh, pretty consistently. And Weathersfield's defense got to figure out how to how to stop this. Going into the wind, I'm like we are right now. Going into the north wind here. Uh, Cambridge just ball controlling on the ground and really passing around. Two carries by Havoc, two by Jasper, and one by Melton. Now handoff up the middle again to Melton, and he is met right at the line of scrimmage, still fighting before four guys have to bring him down. Maybe picks up about a half yard. And uh, the play was made in the hole by Court Jackson. He hit him and uh, stopped him in the hole and uh, got him running to the sideline where he's cleaned up by a couple other Weathersfield players. But that's really the first defensive stop they've had. The second and nine now from the Viking 48. Cambridge in control, down to the 9.20 mark in the first quarter. Skelton under center again. Jasper in motion, the left-hand side. Now handoff back the other way to Havoc over that guard tackle area, and he is met right away at the line of scrimmage. That play was a little bit of a counter, and it took a little while to uh, get Havoc back in the hole, and uh, there were some people sitting there waiting for him that time. Number 53, uh, Wade Wertheiser. Uh, made a nice play, and a couple of the linemen did as well, and I didn't get, I didn't get their number. Didn't they come up into a six-man line there once Cambridge got set? Yeah, like they're starting to now. set the line a little bit more. Yeah, as soon as, soon as Weathersfield gets set, the linebackers creep up over the six-man. Now a pitch to the left-hand side to Jasper. A couple of men block in front of him, trying to get around, and can't do it as he only gets a couple yards, and he goes down immediately. So it's going to be fourth down now for Cambridge. And the play that time was made by Nathan Rashid, number 51, for uh, Weathersfield, and that time they did have all 11 people inside the box. So the six-man line and, and even the halfbacks were up uh, about three or four yards off the line of scrimmage. So it's now fourth and six from the Cambridge 44-yard line. They will be in a punting situation. And we're looking back deep for Weatherfield. Looks to be Jackson and Bailabreski. Snap is back. Looks like clean snap and punted. Had some pressure. Gets it off. Fielded by Bila Brasky as he's taking up the right-hand side of the field. He's got some blocking. A lot of room, and Gets it up close to midfield. And a good return, fielding it back almost around his 15-yard line. Gets close to midfield. That's where the center almost got kicked his coverage. and got it up the field pretty well. Bila Brasky made a nice cut to the outside and uh, got in behind the wall. And if it hadn't been for uh, Noah Melton making a nice tackle over on the sideline, he would have gotten even more yardage. So Travis Castillo with a good punt there, but a good return by Weathersfield. And they are now on their 40-yard line as Weathersfield comes up into their offense. And that is Jared Johnson back at quarterback now. Handoff up the middle and pickup of about five yards on the play. That was a nice counter trap up inside uh, to the fullback. Uh, you'd love to start off the first uh, play from scrimmage of the five-yard game. It's going to be second and six. On, a, on Weathersfield's 45-yard line. So Lemke gets the first carry of the ball game for Weathersfield. They come back, the wing-back formation again, wing on the right-hand side of the offense. Johnson barks out the call, looks like a handoff up the middle again, and he picks up close to the first down, getting real close, maybe about a yard, yard and a half short. And Cambridge's playing a little bit different defense than we normally see, and normally they play a six-man front, but right now it looks like they're playing a 5-4 five down linemen, uh, four linebackers uh, with Jasper uh, up at his, his linebacker, and they've got uh, Johnston in as a uh, defensive back, uh, so they're playing a 5-4-2. So Weathersfield up front now once again trying to move, get that first down, handoff over the middle again, and it looks like he just about, yeah, probably should have got the first down on that carry. The ball spotted a little bit further, but they'll move it back, so first down there for Weathersfield again. And uh, I think we just saw a defensive tackle go back in. Jared Brewer just winning the game, and I bet they're going back to their uh, base 6 3 defense here. And that was a change right at the beginning of the game that uh, Coach Stahl wanted to move Jared out and make a 5-4 look at the beginning of the ball game. Yeah, he was a win, especially I think a big thing is, is the win behind him here. Whether it should be a passing team, they were going to challenge that to throw. So Lemke gets a handoff again up the middle, picks up a few yards, another three, three and a half on the carry. So right now, Weathersfield looking pretty good as well on their opening drive. And the aforementioned uh, Brewer, uh, Jared Brewer, was the man who made the tackle for Cambridge that time. 
So second and eight, Weatherfield with the ball on the Cambridge 43-yard line, 6.07 to go in this first quarter. As Jared Johnson brings his flying deep back up to the line in the backfield, as been Seth Feldner, he comes in and out with the plays now. A pitch over to the right-hand side off at an option. That is carried by Bible Brusky around left end. He's got big yardage at the 20-yard line of Cambridge and out of bounds to a pickup of about 28 yards on the carry. Big, big uh, play. The defensive end got taken in. And uh, once he was taken in on the block, uh, they had the corner turned on the option. Uh, made a nice run, nice pickup. I think there could have been a hold on the defensive back as the Weathersfield player got his hands out and grabbed the hold of the jersey, but they didn't call it. So big pickup there by by Lebrusky. Wing on the right-hand side now as another option going the right-hand way. And Johnson's going to keep it himself, taking his way through the defense. He's going to get out of it and go all the way in the end zone for a score. Does Jared Johnson, and tell you what, that was off the option, ended up going straight up the middle and picked and chose his way through the Cambridge defense. Nobody really even got a hand on him, and just like that, the geese on the board. And that's what they needed to do. They've got Cambridge back on their heels a little bit, and, and Weatherfield's going to have to keep that momentum going if they're going to keep their playoff uh, hopes alive here. So they will go for the extra point now and kicking for Weathersfield number 22, Colby Horsley. And that one up and just squeaked through the right side of the upright. That ball went off of a, of a defender. It went off his helmet, went up in the air. It never had a chance, never was higher than the ball. <laughs> hit, the, hit the defensive player's helmet, went up in the air, and went over the bar for a good, uh, good extra point. So lucky uh, lucky play there for the Geese. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. With Weathersfield up 7-0, you're listening to High School Football on AM 1500. WGEN and 102.5 The Hawk. Years ago, small towns relied on the hometown service of the various merchants. These merchants knew their customers, and the customers knew the merchants. Times have changed, and society has moved to a more fast-paced style of life. We have changed our shopping habits to a more non-personalized service in exchange for a one-stop shop that has it all. If you are looking for that time-valued service, then the Gala Pharmacy has what you need. They offer a wide variety of merchandise in addition to a full line pharmacy. Stop in today at the Galvin Pharmacy, where service is a tradition. And welcome back to the bowl in Cambridge. I'm Jason Bates with me, Russ Boldhouse, and Dan Golly as Weathersfield just goes up on the board. First ball point for the ball game. Kick now deep to Jasper, left hand side of the field. He makes a couple people miss, only picks up a couple yards fielded. At the 20-yard line, only picks up maybe about the 22, 23-yard line. And uh, Cambridge is having a little hard time holding on to the ball on the kickoff. That's the second time they fumbled the kickoff and uh, did not get a very good run back on the play. The thing is, Weathersfield right now is taking it to their advantage. They know that Cambridge has a reputation for special teams and kickoff returns. And if you watch, they're just punch-kicking it down there, letting it roll around a few times, and, and forcing Kill to have to pick that ball up and not get up a full head of steam. It's five. 33 left in the first quarter. Cambridge with it now. A handoff up the middle. And fighting for yardage is Cale Jasper about making a couple people miss. Now fighting off three more defenders and rolling backwards before he finally has to fall down past the first down marker. Yeah, terrific run. Every time somebody got a hold of him, he just spin out of the tackle. And I would say who got who got uh, who took part in that tackle. I think it was most of the ways for the team. The final two holding on were Cord Jackson and Wade Wilkes, the linebackers. And a lot is made out about Jasper's speed, but people don't realize how strong this young man is. Works out religiously in the offseason. Ball now spotted on the 37-yard line with Weathersfield up by seven. Skelton underneath center now, handoff up the middle. That one looks like it is to Melton, and he's going to get out of it and run to the right-hand side of the field. He's making three people miss, picks up about 20 yards on the carry before he's brought down on the 40. That's and that's my mistake. That's number 32 in the ball good game. Man, good one. That's a good one with the ball. Looks like Melton. Matt Goodwin goes back and forth. You'll see him wearing off of 67 and 32. He's also a, a reserve lineman is what he is. So he's in the backfield right now giving somebody a break. So Melton doing a little bit of everything for this team. Well, it feels back in a six-man front with two linebackers and all, all 11 men within five yards of the ball. So Melton will stay, or excuse me, Goodwin will stay in. Now hand off to the right-hand side to Happick again over tackle, and he falls after fighting. Wilson Yardage maybe gets about two on the carry. 
and what they had working for him uh, earlier on the right guard, right tackle spot. Uh, Weathersfield has made some adjustments and taken that away from him for not getting as much uh, yardage there as they did the first series of the game. So Goodwin staying in, as as you heard, he does just about everything on the team. Plays line, plays fullback. Starts at linebacker on defense. So they'll stick him anywhere they need him. Jasper in motion, left-hand side. They're going to fake to Goodwin up the middle. Now gives to Jasper on the left-hand side over the tackle, and he fights for a few more yards, and it's going to bring up a third-down situation. Good strong run. They had a little bit of a hole, uh, but Weathersfield Weathersfield is just defying uh, Cambridge to throw the ball into the wind here in the first quarter for three minutes and 48 seconds left, and they're just saying, boys, we're going to have 11 people here until you throw it. So third down and four now for Cambridge on the Weathersfield 35-yard line. Big third down now for the Vikings. They are set. Now a handoff to Jasper with some blockers right-hand side and met right at the line of scrimmage and pancaked back. Big penalty flag also come flying out. There might be a hole on Cambridge coming up. I was really surprised that Cale didn't break it off to the right. It looked like it was open to the outside, but he tried to take it back up into the middle. He got a hold of me. So with that, there is a penalty on the play. Officials are going to call holding on the Cambridge Vikings, and that is declined. So that will bring up now fourth down and four with 3.30 to go in this first quarter. Weathersfield up by seven, and Cambridge sitting on the 35-yard line of Weathersfield. Well, I think Cambridge is going to go for it here on this fourth down. You're down to the 35-yard line. You're, you'd be punting into the strong wind. They're kind of in no man's land here right now, and they're going to try to attempt it. And we saw wind play a factor in punts last night in Star County against Rova, so they will go for it. Now it's going to be a counter action to Happick around the right-hand side. He gets around the corner, looks like with the first down, and out of bounds. And the only thing that saved that from being a touchdown is by Lebrusky at the defensive halfback. Well, stayed at home and had enough discipline to stay close enough that when uh, the counter came and, and uh, Happick made the corner, he was there to run him out of bounds. So Happick goes from the 35-yard line down to the 23. That's where Cambridge will start again on this series. First and 10, 3.06 to go in the first quarter. Weathersfield up 7-0. to zero. I formation with power eye in the backfield now. Now it's a handoff to Jasper following those guys. Left hand side over tackle. He makes a couple of guys miss. Hurdles a man. One guy holding on his ankle and drug down. Looks like shy of the first down by a couple yards. And Byler Bresky was again the player who was holding onto the ankle for his life, trying to keep him, uh, keep him from getting loose. He just had a hold of the foot, and he was saying, come on, guys, somebody else finish him off, please. And Jasper hurdled him initially, and uh, still trying to fight. He's still on his foot. just trying to drive with one foot before somebody else finally came to hit him. Two really good athletes there kind of battling at it. Bad so, Bresky just holding on. So 2.33 to go. Now hand off up the middle. That is a good one, and he bounces off of a tackle five yards downfield and in for the score on the left-hand corner before he's brought down. He gets the ball across, and Cambridge now down only by one point. Nice run, nice misdirection. They were they faked uh, Jasper around the right side, gave it to Goodwin up over the left guard, and he broke clean after he made it to the initial uh, line of players, and uh, he went in un untouched. And you can hear the howitzer go off here in Cambridge. We can feel it in the booth here shaking up. And Cambridge now going for their extra point. And it's going to be Castile with the kicking duties at the 226 mark in this first quarter. 7-6 to six before this extra point. We'll see how this goes. Now everybody is set. And we've got a flag. Maybe the smoke on the field. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he's got off sides on Weathersfield even before Cambridge just came to a set. It uh, looks like uh, Weathersfield uh, 78 or 45 over here on the right side got in the neutral zone. They almost hard to see there for a while. The uh, howitzer gun that went off, there's tons of smoke on the field for the players in their face. And then the penalty flags come out. And uh, this will maybe make it interesting. Could go for two if they can get a little closer, but they're still going to go for it on the uh, extra point attempt. He has a lot of faith in Castile's foot, going, even going into the wind. We've seen him in warm-ups kick him from 40 yards with the wind behind him. Ball is snapped. The fumble snapped. Skelton's going to have to pick up with it, trying to get rid of it. Can't, and he is hammered immediately as he just got up from his stance. So the extra point will not even be able to be attempted there, as Willisville does a good job jumping on it. So with 2.26 to go in this first quarter, Cambridge down 7-6. to six. We'll come back with more football right here on AM 1500 WGEN and 102.5 The Hawk. Scott, with me, a fan, with a sample that him or good, said an open 165. 
For those of you who don't speak Swedish, Joe is asking me if I knew that Surveyor Mutual had been insuring homes and farms since 1865. That's true, and today Surveyor is the largest farm mutual in Illinois. Well, that is hence changed any or in. Yes, Joe, Surveyor's home office is in Illinois, and Stinson Insurance in Cambridge is proud to offer coverage through Surveyor Mutual. For more information, call us at Stinson Insurance in Cambridge, 937-2453. Yeah, sure. But uh, the extra point and no-go, as the snap wasn't quite as, uh, as true as it should have been there, and uh, no extra point at that. Yeah, he's a long snapper. Even after uh, all the offense and defense he plays, he's also a long snapper for Cambridge's team. And it has been a problem this year of getting good snaps back to the to the uh, set man, which is Skelton. So that's one thing they're going to have to work, off of, work on as the season goes along here. And as strong as Jasper is, uh, when, you're, when you're playing down in that situation, some bigger boys maybe up front, it's hard to get your head up after, after a snap. Now, a low line drive kick fielded back around the 25-yard line by Weathersfield, trying to move in the middle of the field to the wedge, and he is snowballed at about the 30-yard line. Seth Feldner for Weathersfield ran back to kick off, and it was a tremendous open field tackle by number 21, Brandon Johnson. Uh, textbook just got his head and shoulder pad down. Rusty, and he spins out four past the first down and hits about 12 yards downfield. The ball comes out, but they're staying down by contact. Yeah, he, was, he was on the ground. His knee was on the ground. He was spinning. Uh, he's really one of their better runners. Uh, they run him out of the wing spot and uh, like to run kind of trap up over the middle, and, and uh, they'll ride that thing all day if, if you don't keep it uh, contained. Cambridge is back in their, six, their basic 6-3 defense. By Lebrusky, a good good athletes uh, playing basketball stars there and a fabulous pitcher in baseball as well as now we've got a little misdirection hand off to the right hand side and that one good for about seven yards that one looks like it's Seth Felder. It was Felder and a nice tackle by uh, number 33 Happick uh, and they're getting some huge yards up here in first down as well that's a, a about an eight yard gain and the Weathersfield uh, offensive line is doing a very good job of getting some holes open. So we will resume play two, second and two now from the Cambridge 45 with Weatherfield. And it looks like it's going to be handoff over to the right-hand side. That's Jackson, and he can pass the first down marker by a few yards. And then number 32 for Cambridge said, how do you do? Matt Goodwin just stopped in Debbie's tracks and took him back up the field. Goodwin seems to be having quite the ball game here, coming in as sub on the fullback and some good, pretty good defensive hits right now from his linebacker position. So a minute 19 we're down to now in this first quarter. Weathersfield up 7-6. to six, And they are now down to the Capers 41-yard line on this drive with the first down. Weathersfield, everyone in the backfield now. Handoff and a little misdirection action to Byla Bresky again. And he's rumbling out past another first down on the left-hand side. Pickup of about 13 on the play. Yeah, and just a, a quick opener up the middle. Uh, they're getting some good blocks from uh, the center and the two guards, and they're trapping somebody inside, and, and uh, big, big holes. And, and Cambridge going to have to figure out what's, what's happening to them. We're sitting here with less than a minute left in the first quarter. The wind behind them, and the weather field is yet to throw a pass. With the wind behind them, they seem to be doing it on the ground pretty easily against Cambridge's defense. Now we got some uh, play action, and then second man through. That is to by Labreski, and he gets close to another first down off the first and ten on the left-hand side. Well, the reason they're not throwing is because in first down, they're getting six and seven and eight yards, and when you're uh, getting holes like that and getting some yardage like that, it does, why, uh, why put the ball in the air? So 26 seconds now in the first quarter clock, continuing to run. We'll see if, if Weatherfield gets off another snap here, and they're already up to the line of scrimmage with 18 seconds to go, so it looks like they'll get off one more play. Everyone in the backfield again, Johnson handing off first man through up the middle. That one is to Lemke and he is met right away and pushed back by two Cambridge defenders. And that time they gave it to the first man in the hole, and uh, they're playing him pretty well. It's, it's the third man, the wing back, that's coming in behind the, the lead blockers that they're having trouble trying to figure out how to handle. So with that, the first quarter ends with Weathersfield leading the ball game 7-6 to six, down to the Cambridge 19-yard line. We'll come back with more from Cambridge in just a moment here on AM 1500 WGEN and 102.5 The Hawks. 
Enjoy saving seven days a week at Galva and Orient Food Pride. 81% lean ground beef is just 99 cents a pound. Golden ripe dill bananas are 28 cents a pound. Wake up to General Meals Kicks or Cheerios in a 13 to 15 ounce box, two for four dollars. Grady Extra Large Eggs, 59 cents a package. Refreshing Our Family Pop, two for four dollars for a 12 pack. And shaved or sliced ham from our deli is perfect for sandwiches, just $1.89 a pound. Shop and save at Galva and Orient Food Pride today. open up the second quarter of play and so far uh, Weathersfield moving the ball pretty easily down the field. Cambridge hasn't found an answer for it yet. Yeah, they're going to have to figure out a, uh, get some penetration and I think that's the whole key in order to uh, stop that, that counter coming from the wing the wing back. Uh, you got to get some penetration up the middle and keep the, keep that from uh, those plays from developing like that. I would like to make a comment. We're using the Kiwani Sail Barns truck and trailer here to do the game from today and believe it or not you folks we had to crack the window open it was getting a little warm in here <laughs> getting a little warm in here today uh guthrie auctioneering and mark guthrie allowing us to use the vehicle as he did last night now weatherfield starts out hand off the lemke up the middle again he fights for a uh, first down yardage and a couple more on the play i think that was uh by Lebreski out of the halfback spot they moved him up that time they took him up in the wing spot and put him back where lemke is uh but they they ran him out of the uh, halfback spot that time. And finishing up, once again, we'd like to thank Guthrie Actioneering for letting us use their vehicle to stay out of the elements today. And also last night it came in handy, so thanks to Mark and Travis Spivey for that. Weatherfield back up now on the ball, and uh, fake handoff looks like it was going to be a bootleg around the right-hand side, or maybe even an option play. I think it was going to be an option, but uh, Johnson is brought down right away. And that's what they needed. They got some penetration and took that pitch and that option away from them. And uh, we'll see if uh, Cambridge stays in that uh, six-man front. Do they drop to a five now that there's uh, probably a passing situation with second and long? So second and nine ball on the 13 as we just open up the second quarter of play. Weather shield up seven to six. Everyone in the backfield again is going to be handoff left-hand side to Bilo Bresci. Breaks a couple tackles. Maybe picks up about five on the play before he is brought down on the left-hand side. Getting close now close now inside the 10 and about maybe down to about the 8 yard line. And we're down in the country now where uh, you would normally think the defense is going to go to an 8 man front put people in gaps and see if they can get a stop here. Looks like Larry Spell is starting to do some switches bringing some more, some more linemen maybe some more sizing on that line also. Here right now he's just seeing 51 coming off the field. Let's see what transpires here 3rd and 5 at the 10 and a half mark now it's going to be a handoff second man through on the left hand side looks like Byla Brunsky again but uh, he's going to come up short of a first down he's not going to be short by much and it's going to be fourth down in about a yard and uh, obviously they're going to go for it here uh, on the five yard line so checking back in now for Cambridge is number 51 that is Nick Hancock going back into the ball game so just a little bit of a different defense for Cambridge He's going to go back into the linebacker position. We're under 10 minutes now in the second quarter. Ball on the five, fourth and one for Weathersfield, and it's going to be a handoff to the right-hand side and brought down short of the first down, and there's a flag on the play. He was hit in the backfield, was Lemke, and uh, we'll see what the flag's on. Actually, I think I turn that, that penalty down and take the ball because it was fourth down. It's going to be Cambridge's ball here on the turnover. And I believe that was Port Jackson on the carry, but he was hit in the backfield. So uh, yeah, that, that, that surprised me. They went through kind of a power sweep, and power sweeps take a little time. And when you when you got everybody coming on defense in the five-yard line, uh, that was probably not the best call offensively when those quick hitters been working for you so well. So good defensive standout by the Vikings. They shut down a scoring drive inside the 10, and Cambridge will start on their own six-yard line with the ball now. Skelton with the team down, and going over to the right-hand side, fighting for yardage, maybe picks up about three. Do the Vikings, that looked like it was Jasper on the right-hand side, and uh, trying to get themselves out of the hole now. Yeah, they aren't going to do anything to, uh, to uh, get too carried away here, try to get some... Uh, yardage if they don't they're just going to punt the ball up in the air and, and get some field uh, position here maybe 
So they call it a three yard game. So ball spot is to nine, second and seven. Nine minutes yet to go in this half. Cambridge down by one point. Seven to six is the score. Both teams opening up and getting scoring drives in the first quarter. Skelton dropping back now. Pitches to Jasper on the left hand side. He's going by a couple blockers. Picks up a few yards before he is tripped up by the ankles and goes down. Looks like it'll be just maybe short of the first down. Chris Lemke uh, was on the ground under a under a blocker, took his arm out and uh, clipped his ankle, and that's what brought him down. And if that, he had not done that, I think uh, Jasper was gone because he was getting to the outside, and he still had a blocker in front of him. Dave Blocker was five yards ahead in front of him yet, looking to seal off the last defender. Jasper just getting caught around the ankles now. He's the wing on the right-hand side, coming in motion towards the left. It's going to be action back to the right-hand side to Happick, and he fights for the first down, but looks like he's going to be short as well. Looks like he's going to come up about a half a yard short. So that's going to bring up a fourth down situation. Ball being spotted on the 15, about... A long one yard now for the Vikings, and I imagine they would punt. Oh, they've, got, they've got to on their 15-yard line. Yeah, they're not going to take a chance here. With the wind to your back, you're going to let your punter get it up in the air and let it work. Especially with the foot that Travis Castile has or displayed all season long. He's been a tremendous punter. Okay, I think he hit an 80-yarder against Rova on a punt and, and forced Rova to start around their two-yard line. So snap is good back to Castile. He gets off a good line over drive through over the head of Byla Brasky. It's going all the way back towards the 20-yard line of Weathershill. He's going to lay dead on the 23. That's where Cambridge rolled down it. So 65-yarder. 65-yard kick. For Castile, another good boot. And tell you what, if there's any wind in his back, it is going to go a long way. And uh, that night against Rovey, he got a heck of a foot into it. Another good kick here. So this backs up Weathersfield. Yeah, I was surprised the Weathersfield uh, receivers weren't uh, back a little deeper than that. They, they were playing standard distance. And this young man does has shown that he has an excellent leg. With the wind to his back, uh, there was no reason to be playing up that close. They gave way about uh, 30 yards on, or 25 yards extra for not fielding that, that punt. About seven and a half minutes to go in the half. Weathersfield up by seven to six. In motion by Labreski, left hand side. Now handoff up the middle. That looks like it's Lemke, and he is pushing the pile and gets at least about seven yards out of the carry. Yeah, nice, nice run by Lemke and a tackle uh, by linebacker uh, uh, number 32, which is Matt Goodwin again for Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge's line looks like they're, hit, they're hitting their people and trying to read and react. And uh, when, when they're running these counters, you just got to let a couple dogs go and get up the field and penetrate and mess up those traps. So second and three from the three. Looks like it's going to be Lumpy again up the middle. He's got a big hole past the first down marker, which was about the looks like it was, it was about the 37-yard line. He's up past the 40 to about the 43-yard line. About 11-yard gain, and all they're doing is just a quick opener now. They've had that counter working. They're, they're now giving it to the front first man and taking to the counter man. You really have to give, give Buck credit. He's really keeping Cambridge's defense off balance here. Not through the passing game, but just different looks. So first and 10 from the 42 of their own side of the field is Winnifield Lemke again up the middle and bouncing off a couple people, picking up another about six, seven yards on the carry. Uh, I'm, I'm just impressed with the push that the Weathersfield offensive line's getting. Uh, that time, uh, Lemke was almost tackled by his own uh, lineman blocking his man. He pushed him up the field about five yards, and he ran up into his back. And that's tremendous push for an offensive lineman. Well, that's three carries in a row for 27 yards for Lemke. So you can tell that he's kind of been the workhorse all of a sudden on this drive. So second and four now, 48-yard line for the Geese. And off second man through, and... He isn't going to go too far. Still fighting on his feet, but everybody's around him. They're going to whistle that dead. He may have got a yard initially, but I think he went back a little bit on his own, so I don't know if he'll get that far. Yeah, they, that was to buy Lebrowski, and uh, they gave it to him uh, second man into the hole, and uh, Cambridge did a very good job of uh, defending that, and they had some good penetration that time. So six-minute mark now in this half. Weathersfield still driving third and two now from their own 49. By Lebrowski on the right wing. And we just get the snap off, and flags come out from all sides of the field. It looks like a yellow field here. Okay. Many flags that came out on that one. And we do have an illegal procedure on Weathersfield. Yeah, I think it was a left guard jump. So that will definitely help the Vikings there. That turns it from a third and short into a third and seven. 
And they will be moved back to their 44-yard uh, line. First penalty of the ball game that was accepted right now. So it's been a good, clean played ball game. Well, they feel ready to start again. Johnson getting his players set down now under the center. Violet Brusky motion handoff to Lemke. No, it's his fake, and it's a pass. Oh. And he is drilled about seven yards deep in the backfield by Cambridge. And he faked to Lemke going up the middle and then popped out to look for somebody downfield. Never had a chance to get his shoulder squared around to throw downfield. Uh, number 24, Aaron Sack, made a, made a yeah. tremendous uh, oh, sack. Because it was a good, it was a good fake, and I don't think anybody saw him. Uh, and uh, made a nice play. So play action doesn't work there for Brothersfield. They will be forced to punt. It is fourth and 15 from their 36 yard line. Jasper back deep, ready to receive. So is looks like uh, number 22 for Cambridge. That is Jason Brandau, and the kick goes out of bounds. Not a very long kick at all for Weathersfield, so this this goes well for Cambridge. 17-yard punt into the wind, and I think he was actually trying to get it out of bounds again, respecting the uh, special teams teamwork of Cambridge in there. So the ball, ball going to be started on the 45-yard line. Not a very good punt, but uh, yeah. in this wind today, maybe not much else you can do. I think Weathersfield got the advantage of about an eight-yard uh, eight-yard gain there on the on the spot of the ball, because that's where the ball hit out of bounds, five yards out of bounds. Oh, here we so go. Jasper to the left-hand side, got some blockers out wide. He's up and field now. Blocker in front of him. Nobody's going to touch him. Maybe makes a move back to the inside of the field on a man who got around his blocker before he is taken down, and he gets it all the way down to the five-yard line from the 45. So a 40-yard run by Jasper down the left-hand side of the field. 50-yard run by Jasper. It started as a 45 of uh, Weathersfield, so pick up a 50 yards for Kale. Tackled by Kyle Moore, and he made that tackle on the ground just by lifting his leg uh, behind him as, as Jasper tried to jump him, and that brought him down. So almost a leg whip type situation to get Jasper down, and we got a timeout on the field. That one by Weathersfield is Cambridge down to the six-yard line now, and with 425 to go in the half, Weathersfield up 7 to 6 on the Vikings. We'll come back with more on AM 1500 WGEN AM 102.5 The Hawk. Come on, Mom. Get off the internet. You've been on there all day. I know it's only $19.95 for unlimited access from John Seal Telephone Company, but I might be missing a call from Chad. Sarah, don't you remember we added voicemails so we wouldn't miss those important calls? If you're missing those important personal or business calls, call today for more information about voicemail. Call 944-2103. in after a long run by Cale Jasper. Yeah, it was a wonderful run. They, that was the first time they were able to get around the outside, uh, and they turned the tables on Weathersfield for their touchdown run. Uh, they got around the outside, got the end caught inside, and, and uh, turned it up. So Jasper now get everybody set. It's going to be handoff to Havoc on the right-hand side, and looks like he's going to lose a yard. And Scott Derecki, uh, a 6'194-pound uh, uh, junior, said, Hello, because uh, somebody was supposed to block him and they didn't. And he was sitting in the in the uh, in the hole, and he just uh, stood up, let him run into him, wrapped him, and over they came backwards. So four minute now, four minutes to go in the half. Cambridge threatening. Now it is second and seven. Ball spotted on the seven. So it's a goal situation here. Jasper on the wing on the right hand side. Skelton dropping back, play action, looking back, left hand side, got a man, and caught for the touchdown, and that one to Travis Castile, diving catch into the, near the pylon, pylon of the uh, end zone there, just misses, and, ja and Castile comes up with that diving catch, so that will put Cambridge up 12 to 7 now, 343 to go in the first half. Excellent, excellent uh, square out. It was just a down and out, and uh, he, uh, he made a nice pattern, and the, it was defended well. The Weathersfield defender was there, but it was a perfectly thrown ball down and away, and uh, Castillo was able to make it for a uh, touchdown and put Cambridge ahead. 
key to that forecast deal is not only did he have a step, he had the inside position on the defender, so Skelton got to throw it down and, in, down and outside to him. Now he got flagged before the two-point conversion can take place. And at first initial indication, it's against Cambridge. And it is as uh, it is now a delay of game situation, so this will probably make it and uh, force them to kick the extra point in this situation instead of going for two. Well, you almost uh, almost want to go ahead and go for two here because uh, otherwise the other team scores, you have to block their kick to, to have a chance. So if you score this, you're forcing them to make a good kick and execute the uh, extra point. So that's what they will do with the man is split out. That's Brando on the right-hand side, looks like Jas or Skelton in the center. Pitch left-hand side of Jasper. A few blockers in front. Looks like he might get around and, and reaches for the end zone. Does he get the ball across? And they signal he does. As he had to reach out to get the, the nose of the ball across the end zone line, and they call it that he does. So he gets the two-point conversion. So a 3.43 to go in this first half. Cambridge now up. 14 to 7. We'll return with more high school football on AM 1500 WGEN and 102.5 The Hawk. Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning in Galva is the one to call for ultimate home comfort. Amanda's Air Command High Efficiency Gas Furnaces have industry-leading efficiency ratings, are built to exact specifications that squeeze the most out of every energy dollar, and come with a 10-year free parts and labor warranty on certain models. Call Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning, your local Amanda dealer in Galva, at 932-2875 to enjoy renewed home comfort and energy savings with a high-efficiency Amanda gas furnace. Coming off a scoring opportunity and uh, getting that extra point, squeaking the ball right across the the goal line. Does Kale Jasper just reaches out, gets it, and a good call by the official. Yeah, the the, the guy who's running up the sideline uh, looked in the end zone to make sure that uh, the gentleman who's the back judge saw it the same way, and they worked well together to call that. And they both saw it that way. They're both ready to go, but they wanted to work together, and it was a nice call. And Cassio's kickoff goes sailing at the goal line and fielded. And that one has the receiver, that's where Jackson has to step in the end zone, so that's a touchback, and Weathershaw will get the ball back out on the 20-yard line. And pain me, though, that that does to make that call to, to give a referee the compliment. <laughs> they did work very well together, and that's the way it's supposed to be done. They're supposed to look together and, and uh, get the call right, and I think they did. 3.43 to go in the half, 14-7. to 7, The Vikings up on Weathershaw. They are going to start from their own 20-yard line now. So plenty of time. Cambridge is back in their 5-3-3 three, three, uh, with uh, three minutes left during a passing situation. You think they're going to throw it. So handoff left-hand side. That is the second man. That was to be by Lebreski, and he maybe picks up about two, two and a half. Yeah, again, they're getting some good push from the Weathersfield line. I'm impressed with Weathersfield's uh, offensive line, what they're doing today. They're getting some good holes opened up and against a very good and very quick Cambridge team. Second down, and they're going to say he got five yards out of the second down and six. Didn't look like he got that far from my vantage point, but they're going to give him four. I guess second and six on the 24-yard line. Violet Bresky in motion. It's going to be an option to the left-hand side. Pitch to Violet Bresky around and pass the first down at the 35-yard line and out of bounds, maybe at about the 37. And number 24 for uh, Cambridge made a nice, uh, nice tackle on the side. Aaron Stack again. Uh, knocking him out of bounds. But a 15-yard pickup for Bob Bresky on that pitch out, trying to tap dance down the sideline. So, so about three or four left to go in the half. 38-yard line, the ball was spotted on first and 10, once again for Weathersfield. And the sun getting out behind the clouds for the fans, trying to warm them up today. Everyone in the backfield almost. we got a win on the right-hand side. It's going to be a handoff up the middle for Weathersfield. And that one getting about six yards on the carry before he is finally hit by a host of Cambridge defenders. That looked like it was Jackson on the play. And 30, 34 for Cambridge uh, was hanging on for dear life from his uh, defensive uh, tackle spot, Noah Melton. And he got drugged for a few yards. So Byla Busky motion on the left-hand side, gets the pitch on the option again around end, big yardage, and pass the first down. And he gets about another seven yards as he is about three yards past the first down marker, getting close down to the 50-yard line. 
And Weathersfield's winning the battle here, but they're losing the war because they're down to uh, about 230 left. And uh, they're just on the 50-yard line. And they, they've got to get some more yards than just three and four and five at a time. So fall spotted just past the 50-yard line, just past it. First and 10 for Weathersfield. Byron Bresky motion again. Play action up the middle. Johnson trying to roll out. Gets around the defender looking downfield. Right-hand side. Hit as he throws. And the ball is going to fall incomplete in front of his receiver downfield. He's down. Looks like he uh, hurt his wrist. That was a nice play. Number 24 for Cambridge. Uh, uh, back again. Came in and put initial pressure on him. But Johnson got around and made a nice move. But Sack didn't give up. And, and he came and uh, hit him from the rear just as he was getting rid of the ball. So 2.14 to go in the half, 14 to 7, the Vikings lead. Weathersfield with control of the football at the 50-yard line, second and 10 now for them. Violet Brusky on the right wing for Weathersfield. Lemke and Jackson in the backfield. It's going to be an option or a second man through on the right-hand side over guard, and Jackson spins past the first down, picking up the 10 yards and just a little bit more, maybe about 11 and a half on the play. Nice game. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, Cambridge was thinking they were going to throw the ball again and uh, gave up a nice 10-yard, uh, 11-yard run for the first down. But, uh, again, uh, Weathersfield is going to have to make some uh, big big plays here to get out before the half. Feldner in the ball game now for Jackson. It's going to be second man through on the left-hand side off the play action look, and uh, he's going to get about, by Lebrecht, he's going to pick up about another 7 to 8 yards on the carry. Matt Goodwin on the tackle again for Cambridge over on the right side linebacker spot. So 148 to go in the half. The ball spotted on the Cambridge 30 yard line. Weathersfield in control with it. Second and two now after the 8 yard pickup by Bile Lebrecht. And he is back again on that right wing with Jackson back in the ball game. Now a little bit of a counter look to Jackson and he's got a nice little hole getting past the first down marker and more. So it looks like he's going to pick up some good yardage, maybe about 13 on the drive. And that gets him down inside the 15-yard uh, line, and all of a sudden the clock is not a problem anymore. They still have, Weatherfield well, still has their three timeouts, I believe, or two timeouts, so they can uh, they can work it here. Minute 26 now, clock is running, and it's going to be play action up the middle. Johnson looking to throw over to the right hand side. He's got a wide open man, and in for the touchdown is Chris Booney, and the Geese get back up on the board with a minute 17 still to play in this first half. And uh, you can't get much more wide open than that. He is in the back of the end zone all by himself. Somebody uh, looks like the uh, halfback that was supposed to be on the left offensive end. He came all the way from the left side to the right side and uh, was wide open. So 13-yard pass from Johnson to Rooney. Minute 17 to go. Extra point attempt now for the Weathersfield Flying Geese. And that one almost blocked but gets up and through. So that will tie up the ball game at 14. So with a minute 17 to go in the half, tie ball game 14 here in Cambridge. We will take a timeout, come back after this on AM 1500 WGEN and 102.5 The Hawks. Hutchcraft Enyard, Auto RV in Geneseo, and Hutchcraft Chevrolet Buick RV in Cambridge would like to wish all the members of area football teams best of luck and success this season. And the folks at both locations remind everyone to stop in for the best deals on wheels. Chevrolet, Buick, Fleetwood and Monaco Motorhomes, Starcraft Campers, and finer used cars and trucks. Hutchcraft and Enyard, Geneseo and Cambridge. back in Cambridge at the ball and the ball game now tied up at 14 as Weathersfield gets the ball with about three and a half minutes to go in this half and they drive all the way down to the Cambridge 13 yard line and get a pass from Johnson to Rooney for 13 yards out to tie up this ball game. I think Buck just tried to take advantage of their Cambridge was sitting back thinking the time that they would put the ball up in the air and they just crack off eight nine yards that are at a romp there on a, on a run and just caught Cambridge in the wrong defense. So the kick now by Horsley, and that is a line drive fielded by Jackson about the 30-yard line. Excuse me, that's Jasper going up the middle, has some blockers, making a few guys miss, as he always does, and drug down at about the 42-yard line, their side of the field. So we'll see if uh, Cambridge wants to exercise their arms and put the ball in the air because this is the perfect opportunity. They got good field position on their own 42-yard line and the wind to the back. I'll tell you what, Jasper, every time he's got the ball, you're never going to get him with the first, maybe not even the second guy. It's going to be that third or fourth guy that uh, the first two guys slow him down. It's always going to be the third or fourth guy that makes the tackle on him. 
Well, being 5'8 and as quick as he is, you're right. The one thing they need to remember is he's, he's the first, second guy. He's never do bring him down. With his speed, that's what makes him so dangerous, and he's also low to the ground. So ball on the 42, first and 10 for Cambridge. And Skelton is going to drop back to throw with the right-hand side. Completes it to Jaffer in the middle of the field. Gets away from the defender just past the first down. And a 12-yard pickup by Jasper. And he is down and uh, looks like we'll see what happens here. A minute five to go. They're moving the chains. We'll see if the timeout's called. Apparently not at this point. So the clock will run as soon as the markers are set. Ball now spotted on the Weathersfield 46-yard line. First and 10 for Cambridge. And the clock starts again. We are now at a minute to go in the half. A nice tackle by Lemke who craves a touchdown because he was the last man. Jasper on that wing now. Skelton going to roll out towards the right-hand side. Stops, looks, fires towards in between two receivers. Almost picked off by Weathersfield. Falls incomplete. And Wade Werkheiser saying, this was my chance. There was nothing but green grass in front of him and it, uh, he was thrown behind him. He got his fingers on the ball, but boy, if he could have brought that in, Weathersfield is going to be picking up six. And it looked like he was going for Jasper. Maybe some uh, little miscommunication on where they were going. Jasper never really finished off the route there. I think he was stopping to set up. So 49 seconds to go in the half. Tied at 14. Ball on the 46. Second and 10 for Cambridge. Skelton now going to pitch to the left-hand side of Jasper. Got some blockers out in front trying to pick his way through. Defenders moves it about five yards downfield. Drug down at the 40-yard line. Clock at the 31 second mark. And we've got a stoppage and a timeout by Cambridge. And with that... We'll take a timeout as well. Come back with the remainder of this half right here on AM 1500 WGEN and 102.5 The Hawk. Fertilizer prices are in an upward trend, but Gateway Co-op can help you get the most out of every plant nutrient dollar you spend. One way is to fall apply. Fall applied fertilizer produces better yields and prices are usually lower than the next spring. And Gateway Co-op's fall fertilizer program features great cash discounts or delayed payment option until April 30th, 2001. Don't wait. Call now. Gateway Co-op, Altona, Galva, and Kiwani. The ones you can count on for all your crop production needs this fall. Gateway Co-op, with over 100 years of service to area agriculture. Cambridge has the ball, 41 seconds, 41.6 if you want to be exact. The goal in the half, 14, all is the score. Cambridge and Weathersfield. Cambridge now with the ball down on the Weathersfield 40-yard line, and they are in a third and four situation now. And uh, 40 yards to go with 40 seconds, uh, but that's not a big problem with the speed they have. If they can get the ball up the field to receiver, uh, they can get that 40 yards pretty quick. So we got a man split over towards the right-hand side. That's Luke Luttrell. Not far away on the right-hand side. Skelton going to drop back to pass. Rolling to the right-hand side, trying to get away from defenders. He passes, caught, and pass the first down and down. Falling down at about the 35-yard line. That was caught by Noah Melton coming out, out of the backfield and running a uh, out, out route for the fullback. The ball on the 30 now. First and 10. For Cambridge, 31 seconds to go in the half. Skelton's going to spike the ball to stop the clock, and Cambridge will discuss what they're going to do next. Yeah, they need to call a couple plays in the huddle here, uh, and uh, they've only got 30 yards to go now. That's not too long a throw for this young man to get in the end zone. And it looked like if Melton could have stayed on his feet, he kind of tripped himself up. If he could have stayed on his feet, maybe could have scored off of it. Guys, they kind of, something to kind of keep in mind. You pick up another 10 yards, they're really in Travis Castillo's field goal range. He does have the boot and, or the leg and the wind behind him, so there's some options there to think about. They don't have to go for the touchdown, but they need to give him some more room here. So back up the line now, we've got uh, Travis Castillo split out left-hand side and play action. Actually draw. gives it to him on a draw up the middle. That is Melton, and he is busting over a couple defenders past the first down marker. Again, so a good draw play by Cambridge. Picks up big yardage, and they're getting close now into that kicking range. And we've got a timeout on the field by Cambridge. So they are now down, downfield down uh, inside the 20, and we've got 20.2 seconds to go. We'll just keep it here. Yeah, that was a, a great call, a great call. One like we saw last night with the uh, middle screen that Star County uh, scored the, head, the lead touchdown on. A uh, great call because uh, the Weathersfield people were really laying their ears back and coming that rushing the passer, and that uh, that uh, draw play was just an outstanding call. You've got a couple shots here now to go for the end zone, but really one of the big things is, is now they're also in Castillo's field goal range. So a couple things for them to keep in mind. Now, they just burnt their second time out. I believe so. I, th I would guess they're going to probably save one just to get him into field goal range. 
And, and even if you want to take a couple shots, if you run wide, you throw downfield, at least throw to the outside so the players maybe can get out of bounds if there's nowhere to go, or just let it go incomplete so you've got a couple more plays. So we'll see what happens as both, both teams now come back out on the field. Once again, 20.2 seconds to go in the half. Tie ball game at 14. Cambridge down to the Rovers for the 18, but they first down, and Skelton getting the team set back up to the will. Now bark out the call. Now he's going to drop back, looking towards the left-hand side. and robs it up. Looks like it was originally intended for Castillo. Castillo kind of looked like he gave up on the route, and uh, that fails incomplete in the end zone. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, what happened there. He might have just been throwing it away, too, as he as he got back and looked at it. Uh, he threw it deep in the end zone and over through both receivers and all three defenders as well. I watched it, and Josh Hampton kind of almost came through untouched. There must have been some miscommunication on the blocking up front. He had a clean shot and, and got on got on to Nate Skelton in a hurry there. So 15.1 seconds to go now. Second and 10 ball on the 18 of Weathersfield. Cambridge with it, looking to... Take the lead in the ball game. Hand off right hand side. That's to half it. Got a blocker. That shoemaker out in front. Gets him down. Gets close to the first down marker and out of bounds. And looks like he takes it out. The guy holding the pole as well. So five seconds down to go in the half. And the ball uh, real close. Real close down. We are around the uh, 10 yard line with the ball. So uh, not really a lot of time. Maybe they can't run another play. They got to make a decision either to go for it here or just go ahead and kick. Yeah, they got one play, and they've got to make the decision whether it's a field goal or, or they go to the score. They're inside the 10, about the 9.5-yard line, and uh, it is third down. So uh, it's just strictly the clock. Do you take the three and go in ahead, or do you uh, take a chance of going up big? So tie ball game of 14, 5.4 to go in the half. Cambridge looking to try to put another few points up on the board. And, and Dan, is this the point? Uh, does Coach Stahl have some gimmicks in the offense? The old halfback pass has always kind of been a favorite. He has used it once, I believe, so far this season. But uh, I'm really surprised. Out and out, Nate Skelton's going out with the bar here right now. They're going for the three points. Um, the last couple of weeks, I'm going to say that Travis Castile's foot's been a little bit erratic. He still has plenty of strength behind it. But he's got the wind behind it just coming off a timeout. He should be able to get set and concentrate on this field goal. And it looks like the ball is spotted on the right half, so he's going to have to bring the ball back across his body to get the field goal. And both teams are set now. Skelton calling for the ball, yet to be snapped. There it is. Placed down. Looks like a good hold. Castillo gets it off, kind of wobbles end over end, and no good off the right-hand side. So, Weathersfield hold. Partial block. As the ball was up and he got it there, but it was, looked like it was partially blocked just enough to deflect it. And I'll tell you what, Cap feels not happy barking at one of his players. Apparently the man who must have let the defender through. Cap feel hot on that one. So halftime. So that is, that concludes the half. So at halftime, 14 to 14 is the ball game. Cambridge and Weathersfield going off the field. And we will take a break, come back in just a moment here on AM 1500 WGEN at 102.5 The Hawk. You are ready to take the giant step to become a homeowner. Your next step should be to First Federal Savings and Loan of Kiwani, Geneseo, and Princeton. They'll sit down with you to help you on the road to becoming a homeowner. It's usually a long road for most people, so you'll want the backing of First Federal with over a century of service. Take the first step today to First Federal Savings and Loan of Kiwani, Geneseo, and Princeton. Deposits are federally insured and backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. in Cambridge. This is Jason Bates with me, Russ Bullhouse and Dan Golly. And here goes the cannon one more time here today. And uh, Cambridge uh, gets a chance to put some more points up on the board right going into half. And the kick cast by Castillo can't make it as a uh, man comes through the line just just, just, just a hair of the ball, just enough to keep it wide to the right. Well, I'm going to tell you, we had a real interesting uh, last four minutes of this game. Uh, it was uh, uh, Cambridge had a 7-6 lead going into the last four minutes, Cambridge pushed over uh, another touchdown and went up 14-7, uh, to seven. Uh, but then uh, Weathersfield came right back and scored 117 left, and he said, well, that's got to be it, the half's got to be over now, but then Cambridge turned right around, got down, and, 
inside the 10 and missed the field goal, a, a 26-yard field goal just at, uh, as the half expired. So, you know, let's just call off the first quarter and a half this next half and let's play the last five minutes and see what happens. Now, last night with Star County and Rosa, it, it seemed like uh, you could feel each team with the momentum in that game and when the momentum will shift. This game, it really doesn't feel like anybody's got that much more momentum than the others. They're just out there, just both teams fighting the whole time, and it's pretty evened up. Well, the, the, the two teams are feeling one another out, and they each had a lot of success in certain certain parts of the game, and it's going to be uh, a testament to which team at, at halftime can make the adjustments to stop what worked for the other team in, uh, in the first half. There's been a lot of offense, a lot of running plays here. I haven't got tallied up the Weathershield side yet, at which they're going to have a pretty good rushing, but Cambridge was 25 rushes for 227 yards in the first half and three for five passing for 32 yards. And if I tally up the Weathersfield side, it's going to be about the same way. They put as many yards on the on the ground as Cambridge has. And, both, and, and good drives at the half for both teams as they both are uh, able to uh, get down close to the goal line before they turn it over on downs. Cambridge coming right back and with the ball then Weathersfield gets the pass there uh, late in the ball game to get the score uh, to get a score and, and go up by seven. Cambridge gets the ball back, does the same. So it's tied right now, and I imagine, at least on Coach Stahl's side, that uh, he's got to be thinking, what do I have to do up front with my defense to stop Cam or stop Weathersfield from getting those, those six, seven, eight-yard runs every time? Yeah, they, they've got to figure out how to handle that trap, uh, those traps. And and clearly, when you have a team trapping like that, the way you stop it is to get penetration. You do not, you do not hit and react. You simply lay your ears back and have a couple of people shoot through gaps and try to just, uh, throw the timing of those plays off. And they've not gotten any penetration on defense yet uh, this half, and, and they're just going to have to have a designated rusher. And we will take a break, and uh, when we come back, we'll hear Lanny Slevin and the IHSA Sports Report. Then, when we come back to resume this ball game, we will break down the rest of this half and give you the final tally of the stats. You're listening to AM 1500 WGEN and 102.5 The Hawk. <laughs> When you're ready to retire, are your finances ready for you? If you haven't already started an IRA, First Federal Savings and Loan of Kiwani, Geneseo, and Princeton urges you to start seriously thinking about your future. Without enough money, retirement can be a long, desolate life. At First Federal Savings and Loan, they'll sit down and help you plan a retirement that will be financially secure. Stop in today to plan for your future. At First Federal Savings and Loan of Kiwani, Geneseo, and Princeton, deposits are federally insured and backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. selection of cars that will fit you up the west CQ2 uh, for the Cambridge Vikings which is linebacker Matt Goodwin so 11.07 just opening up the second half of play the ball game tied Weatherford Cambridge both uh, with 14 points each team uh, able to score on the other and, and uh, a lot of yardage in the first half as you hear Dan Golly set over 400 yards and now uh, we got a second man through on the right hand side for Weatherford that time given to Court Jackson he maybe picks up another yard, so that's going to be fourth down and the ball in the 34. I believe that's going to be the first time that Weatherfield's going to go three plays and punt here um, for the entire game. It's going to be interesting if Cambridge gets the ball back here to see what adjustments the Weatherfield's made. So ball in the 36, they're calling it fourth and one, but it looks a little bit longer than that as far as where the ball is spotted compared to the fourth down marker, so we'll call it a long one, and... Uh, Cambridge started to creep up. Weathersfield apparently going to go for this. Here's a team that has three losses in the conference and nothing to lose. They've got to win today to make the playoffs. And it's going to be uh, and it's going to be a fake and followed. Is Johnson up behind his running backs? Is that the quarterback keeper on the left hand side? And he does get the first down and a couple other extra yards to boot on the play. How big was that play? I mean, uh, you obviously didn't want to have your punter put into that stiff wind. Uh, so, uh, you know, you, you make the call, but that's a gutsy play in, on your own 35-yard line, the fourth and one. And that's one to remember for the end of the ball game as well, as both teams are going to have questionable time punting into the wind on this side of the field, so field position definite part of this game. Now it's going to be an option over to the right-hand side, and before Johnson can do anything with the ball, he is marooned by the Maroons right away in the backfield. And 20, 24th uh, for the... Uh, Cambridge Vikings, Aaron Stock, made another nice play from his left defensive end. He was really the guy who forced the uh, quarterback to uh, 
he tried to keep it because the pitch man was covered and then came down and made a nice play. Except so, Cambridge's option here was to start putting some more pressure in the backfield, shooting some of the gaps. Now handoff up the middle to Lemke, and he picks up a, about three yards on the play as, Cam- as Weathersfield initially had lost six, and we're in a and we're back uh, with 16 yards to go the first down. Now they'll have 12 yards to go after that play, picking up about four, and the ball now spotted on the 38-yard line. And, that, and that's the key. I am seeing some uh, Maroons getting back in the backfield, uh, so the linemen are making some penetration. Whenever you have a team trapping you, that's the way you handle it. You get somebody up in the backfield and disrupt the timing. So under nine minutes to go in the third quarter, and we're going to have an option towards the left-hand side. The pitch is back to by Lebrecht, and he gets it upfield and out of bounds at about the 47-yard line, so still about three, four yards short of the first down. No, but a good 10-yard pickup on that game, and then we're going to be looking at they're going to be looking at fourth and four, fourth and five now. Looks like he stepped out. Must have stepped out a little bit early. I thought he was within two or three. Yeah, I did too. But they they got a spot over there, and Wellesfield's not throwing the pitch, but they must have been a good spot, and they are going to punt the ball this time. And that brings up fourth and four ball on the Wellesfield 46, and so they will punt into this wind. I think the last punt that he had was 17 yards into this wind. I think he's also trying to keep it away from Kale Jasper. And again, he had the same the same thing in mind, guys. He's still going for the out-of-bounds marker. Well, Johnson does kick it out of bounds, and uh, in between the 40 and 35-yard line of Cambridge does the ball sail. So Cambridge will start out with good field position in the ball at their back at this point. But they got a, they got a spot on their own 42, so you know, starting out this half, they've got to take advantage. Uh, Cambridge has to take advantage of the wind of their back, and they're uh, definitely helping on the uh, field position war here with the point into the wind. So the ball on the 42, first and 10 to go for the Vikings. 14, all the ball, the tie score, and Jasper in motion towards the right-hand side. And Skelton keeping it around that side, trying to get up field with it, and doesn't get very far, maybe about a yard or two, as Weathersfield converges on the quarterback. I think that was a broken play. He wanted to give it to uh, his fullback, and the fullback already was engaged with a, with a defender. So he pulled it out of his stomach and just uh, bootlegged it around the corner to try to pick up some yards because but the original handoff, the original play was going to be for a lot. So he does get two on the play, second and eight now for Cambridge on their 44-yard line. Jasper in motion, left-hand side again, and Skelton's going to hand off to Hapik over right guard, and he gets past the first down marker and drug down at about the 46-yard line of Weathersfield. Weathersfield's trying to do the same thing Cambridge did when Weathersfield had the ball on the first possession. They're starting to shoot the gaps, and really one of the best ways to counter that is to put hitters right up the middle and let that first defender get by you. And it's on the second offensive play, it looks like that's what Cambridge figured out right away also. So happy picking up good yardage. First and 10 now again from the Weathersfield 46. The Vikings have it, 7.39 to go in the third quarter. Skelton now hands off to Jasper, left-hand side. Initially hitting the back, they'll break that tackle, but that didn't help him out, though, because two more Weathersfield defenders make their way over to Jasper and take him down in the backfield. And the initial play was made by uh, Josh Hampton. Uh, defensive tackle, the six foot, 139 pound senior. He got in the backfield with good penetration and, and really broke up the timing of the play and uh, allowed the, some support to come up for the loss. I've seen that a few times now. Once if that man has been sealed off, Jasper's had good blocking the outside. He gets around end, big yardage. If not, if that guy isn't sealed, he's getting tackled in the backfield. Now a handoff up the middle, and that one goes for about three, four yards on the carry, and taken down by Weathersfield. And on that was. Uh, Mr. Melton on the carry right up the middle. A tackle by Will Kaiser and Moore once again, the two inside linebackers. Again, it looks to me like Buck's going to try to force the hand of Larry Stahl of keeping it inside the tackles on that penetration. Because of the penetration he's going, what he's coming with, it's going to be hard to do anything else. So 6.30 to go in the third quarter. Ball tie, ball game tied at 14 40. One yard line is Cambridge, and they hand off to Hapik on the right hand side in the guard tackle hole, and he gets. Close to a first down, but going to come up probably a couple yards short. Tackled by Chris Lemke, uh, Wellesfield, but it's going to be fourth and two. And you're on your, you're on your uh, opponent's 38-yard line. You're not going to punt the ball here, obviously. So uh, we'll see if they've got a, a yard and a half play to get the first down. So we're going to call it fourth and a long one on the 38. And we'll see what Coach Stahl would like to call in this situation. Skelton bringing his players up, giving some last-minute instruction. Everybody in the backfield. And it's going to be a give to the first man through, and ooh, he is hit right away. I don't believe he made it. 
And I think that was Melton. I don't think he did either. He was hit and did just but he's almost gonna, as soon as he got the ball. Favorable spot. But, I still but he's think still going to be, be short. yeah, going to be a foot or so short. And they will give Weathersfield control of the football, so the geese hold. Yeah, that uh, they went into a power eye that time. Uh, did Cambridge? Uh, looked like they were probably going to give it to the tailback. They they slipped up and gave it to the front man uh, on a quick opening. But Weathersfield is in a straight eight man line. Everybody in the gap, and there's just no place to go. So now with the ball on at their own 37, Weathersfield will control first and ten. Tie ball game, 5.47 to go in the third quarter. And he gives the second man right-hand side. That's to Jackson. He's got a man around his shirt and being driven out of bounds after picking up at about four. And he is out just near the 40-yard line. And nice tackle, nice support from the two halfbacks. And this is where i got to say that uh, Weathersfield probably got shorted about a yard and a half on that, uh, that run because he was, he was up the field and uh, got knocked backwards uh, back behind the 40-yard the, the line. I was going to say, I, I could have, it looked like he got past the 40 there, so yeah. they're going to call a three-yard carry, second and seven ball on the 40-yard line. Everyone in the backfield now for Weathersfield, and it's going to be a handoff second man left-hand side. That's by Lebreski, and he goes close to the first down, falls down on his back, after getting tripped up, and that one looks like it will be about a yard and a half, two yards short as well. And they're still they're still finding success with that little bit of a counter back off the left guard, and they've been running that uh, play off the guard and then out over the tackle. Uh, two different plays, but basically the same kind of pattern. And they've been they've been working all day. And it's just a slight misdirection as the first back goes through the right guard, the second back through the left guard. So just slight misdirection as they hand it off to Lemke right up the middle. And he goes barreling past the first down, picked up about five on the play before he was drugged down at the 50-yard line. And right now it doesn't look like uh, any team's, either team's gained an advantage. They're both running the same things they did in the first half uh, to success. And uh, uh, I have a feeling, you have a feeling the next score could be very pivotal in the game. And it might come down just to whoever makes a big mistake or who can avoid that big mistake. So... Weathersfield with the ball again. Play action. Johnson to throw. He gets it up in the air. It's going to be short and almost intercepted by Jasper, but the ball falls incomplete. Intended intended originally, it looks like by Lebreski was out there. There were two men out there, by Lebreski and, and Chris Looney, and then they were both basically in the same spot and drug the defenders over to him. Uh, yeah, you, you have to think some, there was a mistake there because you don't find, normally see two uh, offensive receivers within five yards of the, each other. 30 yards up the field, and, and uh, they, they were fortunate that the Jasper didn't intercept that one. So ball on the 50, second and 10 for Weathersfield, and it's going to be option right-hand side, pitch to Jackson. He's getting around then. Jasper gets a hand on him. He breaks through that, and now it looks like past the first down and near the 40-yard line. That time the end went in uh, to make the play on the quarterback, and he forced the pitch, but then he did not get support from the halfback. When Jasper uh, came up to, to tackle uh, uh, Jackson, he almost knocked the ball loose. The ball went up, and Jackson was able to grab it back and get the first down. So now on the Viking side of the field is Weathersfield. Ball spotted right on the 39-yard line. 4.20 to go in the third quarter. Game tied at 14. Weathersfield with it. Johnson under center. Isla Brusky in motion is going to be a give to the fullback over guard, and he's fighting for a few yards, maybe picks about four. That is Lumpke, and that was an option, but that time Johnson decided to give it to his fullback. I'd have to say, though, that the fullback did a really good job. He bounced off four or five people. Three, under four minutes left in this third quarter going into the win. It looks like Weathersfield's coming up with the advantage of burnt, at least getting the clock burned up and getting some field position before they switch going into the fourth quarter here. So at the 3.45 mark now in the third quarter, Weathersfield with it. Now looking to give it to up the middle again. This time it's to Jackson, and Jackson fighting, fighting, but uh, can't reach the first down marker before he's driven back. And that's going to be very, very pivotal. If, if uh, Weathersfield can drive up the field and gain position, field position here against the wind, uh, they will have the wind to their back, and it will be tough for uh, Cambridge to do anything with the punting game and with the field goals. Uh, game as well. They're going to have to uh, uh, push the ball across here. So if they can get, if Weathersfield can get a draw in this quarter, it's really to their advantage because they'll have a win to the back. And we're already down to a three-minute mark in this quarter. Weathersfield eating up a lot of time on the clock. And they are down to the Cambridge 33-yard line. This is a third and four now 
with the game tied at 14. Johnson back under center. By Lebrusky, motion lefty inside. He's going to give two by Lebrusky over the tackle, and he goes past the first down and falls another three yards downfield. So a good pickup, a good pickup of about seven yards on the play. And just from the body language of the two teams, you see that this is starting to uh, get away from Cambridge, maybe. Uh, the Cambridge kids are walking around with their hands down on their sides and up on their hips. And the Wellsfield people are popping back in that uh, huddle pretty quickly. And if there is a, a, a gain of momentum here, it looks like it may be going, uh, maybe wearing white and green right now. <laughs> so now we are uh, first and 10 ball in the 25 of Cambridge. And now we've got to give up the middle again. And that one close to another first down. And that time on the carry was uh, number 34, Seth Feltner. And uh, we had Kyle Moore in at uh, defense, or running back that uh, play as well. So they're getting some fresh bodies. Weathers was getting some fresh bodies in the field as well. And if, if that's one thing, Cambridge may be at a disadvantage. It is the number of players. It is depth. So second and five now for Weathersfield And give to the second man. That is Jackson. And he gets another couple of yards out of the play before he's dug down on the right-hand side. But that's going to set up a big fourth down and two. Oh, no, it's going to be third down, I guess, until inside the... Uh, the 20 yard line is on about the 17 and, and somebody's going to have to make a play. That initial push we saw from Cambridge seemed to be disappearing now on this drive. So we are under two minutes now in the third quarter. Weathersfield deep inside Cambridge territory on the 17 and it's a handoff this time second man through. He's fighting for the first down. I don't know if he got it. That was uh, on the carry That's for Kyle, Kyle Moore. Kyle Moore on number he's 20. On the, he's on the field. He's laying on the field and sitting up slowly. Looks like he turned an ankle or a knee. So he didn't really get anywhere, so it's going to bring up a fourth and two for Weathersfield. Big play here, folks. This could, yeah, this is very pivotal for this ball game. A minute two left here in the third quarter, going into the wind. I uh, just must be outside there, obviously outside of the field goal range here. So this is going to set the tempo for the rest of the game. Everybody in the backfield, second man through, right hand side. Looks like he dove for the first down to Feldner. I initially he might not have got it, but he put his head down and go for it. Looks like he got past the marker pops. Oh, it's right on the line. And it's close. Kind of close. He was it initially stopped a good yard short, and then he kind of fell forward and gave a good jump forward for it. And they are going to have to measure this one. And uh, Cambridge's got to hope the line's a little crooked here because I think <laughs> he's made it. Uh, the, the he's probably made it by about half the length of the football. Yeah, Cambridge number 44, Travis Castile, seemed to shoot the gap up in the middle, tripped him up, but he kept his feet underneath of himself enough to, uh, to get close, but he come up short. Yep, as you can hear, maybe by the fans and Dan's reaction, Weatherfield just comes up short, maybe a link or two in the chain, and that is about it. And Cambridge initially, as soon as that, that pole was placed down, they started signaling, and that was about it, so Cambridge will control. Okay, then. Are you guys trying to tell me I was a homer on that call? <laughs> yeah, it was a favorable spot. <laughs> well, well, we are in Cambridge, and we know we never get the calls when we're like There you go. <laughs> so without the handoff, the second man threw on the right-hand side. I believe that's Aspic. And uh, maybe pick up about two on the play as they start from their own 15-yard line, does Cambridge. And we're under, we're at about 30 seconds clock running now in this third quarter. Yes, Dan Golly is from Cambridge. He's been very, uh, very cautious now to, to not choose one team or the other, trying to call it right down the middle. Never said I was professional. <laughs> he doesn't cheat. <laughs> and he works, he works for food, everybody, so we don't have to pay him very much. Get him a bottle of water. We're okay. So uh, Skelton with it now. And handoff out to the right side. It looks like he's going to go up the middle of the Jasper, and he ooh, bent backwards and taken down right at the line of scrimmage. That should be the last play of the third quarter. In fact, we didn't... Yards on that play. It looks like he lost a couple. Yeah, he did. Back to the original one scrimmage. And that'll do it for the third quarter. I was going to say, Dan, we didn't even have to buy you food yet, so we're doing okay there. You have been come pretty cheap today, <laughs> helping us out with staff, and we thank him for that. But at the end of the third quarter, the game is tied at 14 here in Cambridge. We'll take a 30-second timeout, come back with the fourth quarter right here on AM 1500 WGEN and 102.5 The Hawk. Hutchcraft Enyard, Auto RV in Geneseo, and Hutchcraft Chevrolet Buick RV in Cambridge would like to wish all the members of area football teams best of luck and success this season. And the folks at both locations remind everyone to stop in for the best deals on wheels. Chevrolet, Buick, Fleetwood and Monaco Motorhomes, Starcraft Campers, and finer used cars and trucks. Hutchcraft and Enyard, Geneseo and Cambridge. Cambridge 
Mills at the ball, and uh, Cambridge with a fortunate, fortunate spot of the football as uh, they get the ball back after Weatherford was driven deep in their territory and get the ball back on the 15. Now they're in a third down situation. And I don't imply it was a bad spot. The referee was right there and he made it, but uh, I thought I thought he was past the line and, and he came up a couple inches short. But the, the, the key here is it's uh, third down and 10 on Cambridge's 15-yard line, and they are now going into the wind. So uh, while they've got the ball, uh, they, they're not in real good shape. They need to get a couple first downs and gain some yards here. They're going to have to punt the ball and get it back to Weathersfield in a pretty good spot. I would definitely say the third bandage, third quarter advantage went to Weathersfield on that. They controlled the ball on the ground. They got good yardage. They stuck Cambridge at the start of the fourth quarter with a long third and ten deep in, deep in Weathersfield's territory. So once again, third and ten from the 15. It's going to be a pitch to the right-hand side. Happick with it, trying to get around end. And great pursuit by Weatherfield. The CLA maybe picks up about three and a half yards on the carry, and it's going to be fourth down. Yeah, a nice tackle by Wilkeiser that time for the linebacker spot. And the other linebacker, number 51, Nathan Rashid, got in and uh, made him cut it back up inside and kept it from breaking it uh, for a good yardage. So fourth and fifth now, ball on the Cambridge 19-yard line as we start this fourth quarter. Game tied, 14 apiece. And uh, this has just been a pivotal ball game. The third quarter, as, as Dan said, this uh, this was a big quarter for Weathershed, driving and forcing Cambridge back deep in their own territory, turning over the ball. But now field position is Cambridge with a punt. Castillo waiting for it. And the ball back to him. Low snap. He gets it, though. Takes a line drive, which is probably what you want to do, into the wind. And it goes back to the 50-yard line. Good bounce for Cambridge as well. And it's rolling close to the 40-yard line of Weathershed, down to at about the 42. 37-yard punt into the wind. 37-38 net into the wind. You couldn't do much better than that, and they gained a lot of yardage on that. And now uh, now for Cambridge, you've got to make a defensive stand, stop them again, because uh, Weathersfield's going to be able to punt the ball if they end up pin them deep. If they let them go very far, uh, Weathersfield's going to be in uh, four-down territory real quickly here. I, so, I think Weathersfield's in the four-down territory anytime they get to this midfield point. So 42-yard line of their own is it spotted now. Second man through by Lebrowski on the left-hand side, and he picks up about five before he's driven back in the flag on the play. And I think the referee's going to call face mask, and it's unfortunate because he had the, he had the jersey hook. He was in up underneath and had a hold of the jersey, but I think he's, no, nope, they're going to call holding. I was like you. I thought for sure they were going to call face mask yeah. when he had a hold of his jersey on there. Again, a very clean play ball game. This is only the second penalty, first in the second half for 10 yards against Weathersfield. That's a reflection of, I think, of two, uh, two good coaches. Two coaches that have been both there a long time with established programs. I think that's why you're seeing Weathersfield, even though with the three losses, they're really fired up today. They've got the playoffs on the line, and they know what they need to do to make the playoffs. They're quality, it's a quality school and a quality team. And once again, they do have to win outright the rest of the season to make those playoffs. Now it's going to be an option. Right-hand side pick to Feltner. And Feltner moving downfield back towards the original line of scrimmage. And busts through several Cambridge defenders to pick up some yard, more yardage before he goes out of bounds. So about a good 13, 14-yard carry. That was a super win by a sophomore. Uh, Seth Feltner is a sophomore, 5'651 pounds. And he ran with some real authority there and carried some people, finished off that run very well. He got well. the first 10 yards on his own, but he carried the rest of the guys for the next four to six yards. So second and five now on the Cambridge 47-yard line. Excuse me, the Weathersfield 47-yard line. Tied at 14, and we've got a pass situation. Johnson looking back, fires off his back foot. Man, open, that's Jackson. Caught at the 30-yard line, and it looks like he will go in for the score and dives into the end zone for the touchdown, and just like that, Weathersfield on top. Tremendous play, 53 yard, 53 yard pass play. Uh, got behind Jackson, got behind uh, Jasper, and uh, Jasper tried to close the distance, but it was too late. And it's just a beautifully thrown ball. I'll tell you what, that went up in the air a long ways, and it looked like Johnson had to throw that off of his back foot as well. Looked like it was mostly arm from uh, deep in the drop back all the way over to the 30 yard line of Cambridge. So 20 to 14, the score now for the Flying Geese. Snap back on the extra point attempt. Hopefully low kick. And it looks like, yes, it does. Just barely squeaks over the pole. So with that, it's now 21 to 14. Weathersfield leaving, leading in the fourth quarter at the 9.57 mark. You're listening to 
AM 1500 WGEN in Geneseo, 102.5 WHHK, the Hawk. 2875 to enjoy renewed home comfort and energy savings with a high efficiency Amana gas furnace. like that. Weathersfield now with the wind at their back gets a touchdown pass. Just uh, We were wondering when they are going to open up the offense and there it was. Coming through sooner or later but they've had so much success on the ground but uh, Weathersfield going for the home run ball and it worked there on a 53 yard pass reception for the touchdown. And I'm Jason Bates with me Russ Bolthouse. Dan Golly running our stats tonight. 9.57 to go in the fourth quarter and Cambers now in a situation where they need to put some points back up on the board. And, and, and as I said, at the end of the third quarter there, you kind of sensed that Weathersfield was gaining the upper hand just from the body language of, of the players on both sides of the field. Uh, this is the first time, I think, uh, well, the second time Cambridge has been uh, challenged here this late. Just last week against Star County, they had a similar play where they had to come back and make a play. Now kickoff line drive back on the 15, picked up, trying to move it forward now as it was initially bobbled again, having a hard time fielding those, those kickoffs and brought down just uh, looks like about the 16 17 yard line that was uh brandow on the return there for about oh seven or eight yards but he did when he hit the ground the ball come pumping pumping out but it looks like they called it that he was down on the ground about the 19 yard line so cambridge will have to start on their 19 now and going into the wind in this fourth quarter so that may cut down on some of their play calling ability they're down by 7, 21 to 14. And Skelton hands off second man through that. Looks like it is to Goodwin, and he breaks a couple tackles for about seven yards on the right hand side. And by Labreski for Weathersfield made the, the touchdown saving tackle because he was breaking free. And uh, by Labreski got into his legs just enough to take him off balance and put him on the ground. I'm going to say he may be a defensive MB MVP this game for Weatherfield. He's done that a several times this game, saving some long touchdown runs. Well, they're flip flopping him to the wide side of the field, so by is always going to be the DB on the wide side of the field. So Goodwin in at the wingback position now for Jasper, and it's going to be a handoff left hand side and carried him down after maybe about a yard and a half. And that one, I believe, is to happen. So it's going to be third down and a, and a long one. And uh, Cambridge uh, just has to pop some, uh, some plays here to stay in this game. Uh, they're deep in their own territory, going against the wind, and they've got to have some success here fairly quickly uh, in order to uh, get themselves back in a chance to tie this thing up. Third and two is what they call a ball in the 27. Cale Jasper standing on the sideline at this point. Goodwin in the wingback position for him. And handoff once again to Happick, and he powers and bowls his way over a couple defenders past the first down marker. Good five-yard run in a pressure situation. Get them outside your 30-yard line to about the 33, and uh, they just need to need to get after it here. Uh, the Weathersfield line's been dominating line of scrimmage here the last little bit, and uh, Cambridge's got to come back out and knock some people on their heels. So good one still in the ball game. Cambridge has played some real good lines against Stark County and Rove, but I'll tell you what, this Weathersfield line is sure holding their own or showing us something here today. So Happick now gets the ball on the right-hand side. Can't make it around end, though, as Weathersfield closes quickly, and he is down shy of the uh, original line of scrimmage. And tackled by uh, 53 for Weathersfield, which again is Werkheiser, and supported by number uh, 44 for Weathersfield, which is uh, Feldner, the sophomore. So it looks like right now going with a little bigger backfield is Coach Johnson with Jasper on the sideline. Now we've got a man put to the right-hand side. Everybody stacked up, power eye in the backfield. Skelton barks off the call. Now it gives it to Goodwin on the left-hand side following a couple of his blockers, but only picks up maybe about three and a half yards on the carry. So it's going to be third and a long, probably long seven. Uh, we're on some folks out here. It looks like they've got some people locked up. But, uh, ran into a big pile of... Uh, number 32 cut back against the green very well uh, for a good game but uh, just not many holes in the line of scrimmage right now. And so far I'm, I'm impressed with Weathersfield's defense and how they've been able to play this game. They've been closing on the ball very quickly. Their quickness, I haven't been able to see them live yet but their quickness looks awfully good on defense. The ball on the 36 
So third and seven now for the Vikings. Jasper back in now, motioning out to the outside. It's going to be play action up the middle. Skelton looking down the middle, wide open is his man, and it is caught Littrell. by Luke Luttrell. And he's racing down the sideline past the Weathersfield 20 and tripped up at about the 15-yard line. Inside the 15-yard line. 54-yard reception by Luke Littrell. And wide open pass to the defender right down the middle of the field as Skelton on the play action held the safety. And Luttrell, or Littrell, excuse me, gets a big catch, big yardage, and that could be a big swing for Cambridge. Littrell's a tall, rangy junior um, from Cambridge. He brings in plays with, Brant, with uh, Johnston. And that time, he was one of the longest pass receptions Cambridge has had yet this year. Power Eye once again in the backfield. Now it's a handoff to Jasper following his man. He's duke, juking inside. Over the left-hand side in between a few players. Looks like he's got good yardage on the play. Now we got some late flag. Yeah, number 70 uh, turned around and hit number 78 after the play had gone by, and they're going to call on sportsman like on him. And that is against Weathersfield. No, they're, they're calling both Cambridge. players. Oh, both, both sides, players. excuse both me. Both players. The play was over, and they got into each other's face and started hitting each other after the play was over. So that would be a dead ball play, and... Will the play stand, or will the, or will they bring it back? Well, it depends, it depends on whether they blew the, whether it depends whether they blew the whistle and the ball was dead, or uh, it, the play was still going on when they got into it. And I, I'm thinking that the play was dead, and it looks like yeah, they're, yeah. they're going to call a dead ball. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they're going to call a dead ball, so Cambridge should pick up the yardage. Who was the running back on that play? Yeah, I've seen the flags. And I <laughs> it was that was Jasper carrying the second man through, and now we've got a timeout situation. It is Weathersfield. And with 6.36 to go in this ball game, Weathersfield up 21 to 14. A second and five now for Cambridge. We'll take a 30 second timeout and come back more. You're listening to AM 1500 WGEN and 102.5 The Hawks. Fertilizer prices are on an upward trend, but Gateway Co-op can help you get the most out of every plant nutrient dollar you spend. One way is to fall apply. Fall applied fertilizer produces better yields and prices are usually lower than the next spring. And Gateway Co-op's fall fertilizer program features great cash discounts or delayed payment options until April 30th, 2001. Don't wait. Call now. Gateway Co-op, Altona, Galva, and Kiwani. The ones you can count on for all your crop production needs this fall. Gateway Co-op, with over 100 years of service to area agriculture. The ball spotted now on the Weathersfield 8-yard line. Cambridge in control with a second and five and a big pass to Luke Littrell. And he gets Cambridge down here now. It's going to be up to the rest of the team to try to get him in the end zone. Weathersfield up 21-14. to 14. Now it's going to be a handoff back to the right-hand side to Hapik. And, oh, man, I thought he was going to be hit and dropped at the original line of scrimmage. But he somehow works through and picks up some yardage. His helmet ended up in the in the end zone, but I think you're going to mark it just short on about the one. I thought he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he somehow scored it through before he was tripped up. So they're going to be right on the one-yard line with a first down. So four downs from the one. If you don't make it here, you might as well just call the game right now. Well, if you can't get it in from four yards, four downs and from the one, you don't deserve to win the Guys, game. Guys, I can go back to the Stark County last week, and we had the ball on the seven-yard line at the end of the ball game, and it took the fourth down to get the ball across the end zone trying to go up the middle against their big front line. So we got up the middle again, touchdown. and it's signaling touchdown, and no. it is. And no. that is Melton on the carry as they go right up the middle, first down. And so that will make it now a 21-20 to 20 ball game with Weatherfield up by one. So the extra point coming up here. We'll see if Cambridge can tie it with 6.13 to go in the game. We may have to delay the extra point and let the, let the smoke from the cannon <laughs> clear. That's our big hollow holster at the end zone, courtesy of the uh, Galva National Guard. So we will thank Galva for hauling that over and shaking us all over the place every time Cambridge scores. So here's the extra point attempt. Skelton to hold. Castillo will kick. And we are waiting for the signal. There is the snap. The Skelton good hold. And the kick is high and looks to be good. And it is. So with that, the Vikings tie this homecoming game up at 21 with 6.14 to go in this ball game. You're listening to AM 1500 WGEN 102.5. The Hawks will be back in 30 seconds. 
Hutchcraft and your Auto RV in Geneseo and Hutchcraft Chevrolet Buick RV in Cambridge would like to wish all the members of area football teams best of luck and success this season. And the folks at both locations remind everyone to stop in for the best deals on wheels. Chevrolet, Buick, Fleetwood and Monaco Motorhomes, Starcraft Campers, and finer used cars and trucks. Hutchcraft and Enyard, Geneseo and Cambridge. Nice catch from Luke Luttrell, or Littrell, Littrell. excuse me, Littrell, and uh, then a nice plunge from one yard out by Melton, and Cambridge gets the game tied, 6-14 to go in this contest. The fans, we've got an excellent crowd here today, the top of the bowls are just filled with cars and people, what a good ball game and a good treat that they've got today come here. I know the weather's a little bit cold, but I think they've had enough action to keep them a little warm. So Cassio will do the kicking duties and gets a good boot into it, into the wind. Going to be fielded at about the 15 by Weatherstone. That's by Labruski. Got a good wedge in front of him. Pretty good yardage as he's going to be brought down just shy of the 35-yard line. In good field position and has got the wind to the back with the last 607 here. And uh, this may be a game where the last team touching the ball wins. So uh, we'll have to see if Cambridge, after that big score, big play, uh, can get their defense fired up and make a stop here or whether Weathersfield keeps dominating the offensive line of scrimmage. I'll say with six minutes left too, uh, Weathersfield ate up most of the third quarter on a drive and I'm sure they'd like to do that as well. In motion by Labreski, handoff to Jackson it looks like now as he picks up about three yards on the carry on the left hand side. A nice tackle by Happick. He made that tackle coming off of a block. He, he had somebody on his ankles and uh, fell down over the man and got to the, the uh, ball carrier and, and brought him down. 5.46 to go in the ball game. It is tied at 21. Weathersfield with it now on their own 38. Second and six is the call. And it should be now it's an option play right hand side. That is to Felter and skate past a couple defenders tripped up. Looks like uh, his knees went down short of the first down. But it's awfully close and we'll have to see. It is the call of the first down. So he got just enough of it to call a first down. So Cambridge will set up shot now, shot now just on the 44-yard line. Feltner goes out. Court Jackson comes back in with the play for the deep. And so far, Cambridge it doesn't look like they're able to stop him on this so far either after the first few plays. I noticed Cambridge just went out of the six-man line and brought an extra linebacker in and still had no success of stopping him on the counter play. So now it's going to be, uh, looks like a busted play. Johnson's going to keep it, works his way up the middle and then towards the right-hand side and stumbles for about eight yards on the play. That was just a, a belly series. He was going to fake to the fullback and uh, still had his pitch man coming, but it saw that the fullback engaged the only man remaining, so he just stepped up in behind him and made a nice seven, eight-yard run. So second and two from the 48-yard line of Cambridge now. 4.39 to go in the contest. Tie, tie ball game at 21. Hand off second man through. That looks like it's by Labreski. He spins out of three defenders, four defenders, and gets good yardage all the way down to the 35-yard line. Just a real good run. Uh, they got a good hole, and he got started, but uh, he was hit three different times, and each time someone made contact, he would just spin away from the grass and not let him wrap him up and uh, made a nice run. 13 yards on the play for by Labreski, down to 420 now in the ball game. 21 all. The score, ball spotted at the 34 of Cambridge for Weathersfield. Now it's going to be second man through again, this time trying Jackson with it. And he gets hit by four Cambridge defenders before he can even get to the line of scrimmage. Travis Castile coming up out of his linebacker position really forced that issue right at the line drop. He was the first of the four. He's the man to stop the play. And that's one of the few times uh, Cambridge you've seen Maroon in the backfield before this game today. So we're under four minutes now. And that's, that was a big play because it was on first down, and now it's going to be second and 11. And uh, if Cambridge can answer the call one more time, they're going to make Weathersfield make a play here. Everybody, you got a lot of guys up the line of scrimmage for Cambridge now. Looks like he's trying to hand off the ball to Johnson on the right-hand side. The running back never takes it, and Johnson only makes it to his line of scrimmage, and he is tackled. And the difference in the last two plays is that Cambridge is getting uh, penetration from their defensive line. And Hapik's hurt, and it looks like his elbow... Uh, Maybe dinged here a little bit. Holding the forearm, and it looks like we will have a substitution. Coach Johnson sees it, or excuse me, Coach Stahl sees it, and yeah, Castillo going to have to come out of the ball game. 
going rushing in for Cambridge is uh, Jesse Bobson. Third down and long. You got to be playing for a pass here. Tappix out uh, holding his elbow. They did let Jackson behind him early in the ball game. So we'll see what happens here. It's going to be a counter to Byla Brussi. He breaks one tackle, but only maybe picked up about five yards on the play, and he is tackled. So it's going to be fourth and five from just inside the Cambridge 30-yard line, about the 29, 29 and a half. Fourth down and five, and uh, this is the, the ball game as far as Weathersfield goes. If they can get a first down, they still got a chance. If uh, not, uh, Cambridge gets the ball with a little time, and we may be looking at overtime. And Happick comes back into his linebacker position as Cambridge's fans get on their feet, urging their defense on fourth and five from the Cambridge 19. The geese with it. Johnson barking out the signal. Now going to play action. Rolling to his right, looking to throw downfield. Gets hit as he throws. And it looks like it's going to be tipped down. Brandon Wait. Johnson was the smartest move he could. He just grabbed the ball and Absolutely. threw it down. Saved himself about 25 yards, guys. Absolutely. He was going to intercept that ball on the three-yard line. He was smart enough just to spike it in the ground and not catch it and then put them in the hole. Though so it's going to be tough. You've got two minutes and 28 seconds. They're going into the win. They've got uh, 70 yards to go. It's not going to be easy. I think we're looking at overtime here, guys. I hope. Is that extra pay? <laughs> <laughs> well, if they got any poor shots left, maybe an extra shop, I hope. I and hope folks, they have Don't let him fool you. i got a piece of licorice and a bottle of water. <laughs> so, so with that great play there by Cambridge defense, perfect position. Skelton with the ball, hands it off right-hand side. Happick trying to get outside. He breaks the defender, breaks another one with a stiff arm, and he is drug out of bounds. Only picks up two on the play, but it seemed like he ran about 30. And <laughs> he made it easy. He made a couple of nice moves and ran through a couple of tackles to make two or three yards. That was just a heck of an individual effort, and they finally, uh, Scott Ricky finally uh, made the tackle for Weather for Weathersfield. And we're at the two-minute mark now in this contest. 21 all the score. Ball spotted on the 32-yard line of Cambridge. The Vikings with it, second and seven now. And we got flags just as the ball is snapped. That's got to be a mouth uh, equipment or uh, offside. And it's going to be a man in the neutral zone for Weathersfield. So Cambridge is another fortunate call against Weathersfield. So we're going to get some yardage. Make it a second and short now. Second and second three. And second and long three. Yeah, long three. But this is a case for a minute and 40 seconds left. Uh, you might be tempted just to try to hang it out and see what happens down deep. It's a good opportunity for the short yardage on second down. We got a man split to the right side and motion out. Happick on the left side now handoff up the middle to Melton and he is pounding it up past the first down and another couple yards on the play. And the clock's going to stop for the first down to, to move the chain. We got a minute and 30 seconds left here and the uh, first down just outside the 40. And I'll tell you what, when Melton gets it, he, he's moving pretty good. Then he gets hit by defender. And it looks like he has to, you know, the gears get shifted down, but he's still just, the forward momentum just keeps going. So with that wing on the left-hand side, that's half it gives it. Jasper going left. He's got Melton out in front of him. Uh, Weathershield defender almost gets Jasper, and he gets out of it and picks up another seven yards. So a good seven-yard pickup by Jasper. I'll tell you what, he was initially down at the line of scrimmage and just kept that, those, those feet chopping. Finally, with those out of it, and picks up seven. And Scott Feldner and uh, Werkheiser both had a chance to get him and uh, didn't get the job done. we got a timeout here. And with that timeout, we'll take a 30, come back with the rest of this fourth quarter. In just a moment, you're listening to AM 1500 WGN and 102.5 The Hawk. Enjoy saving seven days a week at Galvan Orient Food Pride. 81% lean ground beef is just 99 cents a pound. Golden ripe dough bananas are 28 cents a pound. Wake up to General Mills Kicks or Cheerios in a 13 to 15 ounce box, two for four dollars. Grady Extra Large Eggs, 59 cents a package. Refreshing Our Family Pop, two for four dollars for a 12 pack. And shaved or sliced ham from our deli is perfect for sandwiches, just a dollar 89 a pound. Shop and save at Galvanoi and Food Pride today. And Dan Golly and uh, Cambridge right now in good shape with this ball game. It's second and three from the 48-yard line, their side of the field with a minute 13 to go. And we need some excitement here. This has just been too boring. <laughs> you know, guys, it's just me. This is the first time I've been with you all year, and you get a good ball game, don't you? Yeah, it's uh, just two in a row. Two outstanding games in a row. 
through. Last night and today, Jasper on the wing now, going out to a split position. Skelton back to pass, looking for Jasper, lobbing it up, going to let him make a play, and it's knocked down by Feldner. Good defensive position does the Weathersfield defender Feldner have on Jasper and just takes the ball and slots it down. Yeah, and, and uh, it, it could have been called pass interference, but you, you really couldn't. Both referees looked at each other. The defender was playing the ball all the way. There was contact there, but it was incidental contact. They, they weren't playing the receiver. And uh, just real good defense and a nice throw. It was, it was a good throw and, and uh, just a nice play all the way around. And I think if Skelton, it was a good throw. If he could have just let him just a little bit more, Jasper would have had more of a chance on it. But it was a good throw. Minute eight to go. Tie ball game. And we had a man split out wide. That's literal. And Jasper going out that way, too. Another pass. No, it's a draw to Melton. And he comes up just short of the first down by about a yard. And again, it was a good play, but on third down and short, uh, they needed the first down. And uh, we're going to have another timeout here. This one's called by Weathersfield. This one's Weathersfield. I'm not sure if they think that Cambridge is going to punt here. You're looking to fall on the 50-yard line. They, they might want to take a shot or two before, this, before that last minute up in the ball game. 59 seconds to go now. Uh, fourth and two is what they're going to call it. Ball right on the 50-yard line. And a score tied at 21. 21 all, and I'm telling you, it's been a war and it's been going back and forth. And I, you know, I thought that uh, Weathersfield had kind of seized the momentum, but then all of a sudden, a big pass play to Latrell La for uh, um, 50 some yards to set him up, set Cambridge up in business inside the 15 yard line. They go on and score, tie the game, and uh, it's, it's a little, uh, it's a little war we got going here. And a college score update right now, and I promised uh, Bob Baylor over here in Cambridge I do this. His son goes to Northern, and it's Northern son coming today as well, and they are defeating right now uh, Central Florida by the score of 16-7. to 7. So, Bob, if you're listening, there's your score. Bob is the PA announcer up there for Cambridge on the home game. So Northern Illinois, is that, is that a football game? <laughs> and it hasn't been much of a football school in the past, but they are doing pretty good this year. I went, I'm an alumni there, there, too, so... A couple of Genesis boys up there that went there this year. I believe so. Uh, I Aaron Anderson the, and uh, I can't think of the other one. Cambridge is going to punt. So Cambridge looking at a punt on fourth and two at midfield and uh, maybe a smart deal of this situation. And Watersfield right there and it wasn't a first down by much. H O M E R. Easy, easy. I no, it, I think that was more to control the ball here than it yeah. was to go down for the. And it was, it was a good call and uh, well executed and. and if he would have followed his blocker better, he would have got a lot more yards. Clock running, handoff to Jasper, following a couple blockers. He gets up in the hole, short of the first down, about seven on the play, and he's driven down 28 seconds to go. And we've got a timeout with Cambridge to whip up. We'll take a 30-second timeout, come back with more. You're listening to 102.5 The Hawks. And we will just keep it here in Cambridge. Uh, we have 28.1 sec seconds left in the ball game. Cambridge uh, with the ball on Weathersfield 43, but uh, still a ways to go before they can even get a kickoff. I don't think anybody's left the uh, ballpark here today, guys. They're staying here pretty tight. Um, just They've been treated to an excellent game on a really decent Saturday, a little chilly out, a little windy, but it's just what high school football is all about. And it's, it's uh, 28 seconds left in the game. Uh, we're maybe looking at overtime here. Uh, Cambridge still has control of the ball and can pass the ball. And Cambridge coming back out on the field now. Weatherfield setting up for the play. Once again, 28 seconds left. Ball on the 43, 43 of Weatherfield, second and five. Jasper on the wing. He's moving out wide in motion. It's a fake up the middle. He's looking downfield. He's jumping. He's got a man long and just can't connect as going diving forward it looked like was Brandon Johnson, Brandon Johnson and uh, pretty good position did Court Jackson have on Johnson and, and the ball was out there long enough for just a step just uh, went, went about a yard and a half uh, too far yeah he had him beat but he didn't have him beat by enough uh, Jackson stayed with him pretty well and uh, it would have had to been a perfectly thrown ball and, and uh, that's an awful lot to expect for a high school kid to do into the wind like this but he, he delivered it well and gave him a chance so 23 seconds now in the ball game. Third and five from the Weatherfield. 43. Whitrow out wide. Jasper in the slot. Skelton dropping back again. Good protection. Looking downfield. Firing a wobbly pass in the direction of Castile. Cutting across the field on the right hand side. And that one uh, just in front of him and incomplete. 
And we have fourth and five now from the 44, Weathersfield 44 yard line. And with uh, 17 seconds left, they've got to get a first down. I don't know that Cambridge has another timeout left, but if they get a first down, they can spike the ball and set up one last play. So, we should, uh, this could very well be the last play of this game. In fact, uh, 17 seconds, depending on what happens here, Weathersfield could get one more chance as well. So they are back in line of scrimmage, and, and Skelton going to drop back again, rolling to the right-hand side. Good protection initially. Dumps it off short. Two men going for it on Cambridge. I think it is caught. 77. And unless they are, he must have checked in as an eligible receiver, and he gets out of bounds with not very much yardage on the play. Drops him, but I think it came off the hands of Brandon Johnson and into the hands of a, of a yeah. Cambridge lineman. Yeah, it was deflected, and they're talking about it. And that's why they're saying it had to be a good catch. Now we're going to see if it's the first down. And we've got an official timeout on the field as they discuss that. We'll just keep it here with eight seconds to go. I think that was yeah, when they're bringing the chains across the field. Uh, Gary Stahl and Steve Brand Howe making the long track across the field with the yard markers. Again, with eight seconds left to go, it's kind of a one-play shot, guys, on if, which either team gets the ball here. The Weathersfield right now showing us that they're going to get the ball back and get maybe one more shot at the, at a home run here. And that's what it is. Weathersfield will get the ball now with 8.1 seconds to go. And this is just, you know, the old Roger Staubach, Hail Mary play. If you're going to do anything, that's it. And I'm looking at Cambridge's defense. They're bringing in number four, Davey Sullivan. Uh, the fastest kid on the team, they're going to play him probably about 30 yards off the ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks, like, looks like they've got five defensive backs on the field. Uh, the only linebackers are... Uh, Tappick in uh, number 32. Uh, uh, Matt Goodwin has been playing linebacker most of the day. Everybody else, there's uh, there are five defensive backs on the field now. And Weathersfield comes out in a tight formation. And it's going to be play action. Pressure on Johnson, and he is sacked. Shoemaker, Ryan Shoemaker on the sack. And that's the game. That'll do it for we'll the game. We'll be having a coin toss here, and uh, <laughs> we're going to go into overtime. The overtime here in Cambridge on homecoming. The game tied up at 21 apiece. So we are going to take a 30-second timeout. We'll come back with the overtime right here on 102.5 The Hawk. Fertilizer prices are in an upward trend, but Gateway Co-op can help you get the most out of every plant nutrient dollar you spend. One way is to fall apply. Fall applied fertilizer produces better yields and prices are usually lower than the next spring. And Gateway Co-op's fall fertilizer program features great cash discounts or delayed payment option until April 30th, 2001. Don't wait. Call now. Gateway Co-op, Altona, Galva, and Kiwani. The ones you can count on for all your crop production needs this fall. Gateway Co-op, with over 100 years of service to area agriculture. And we are back here in Cambridge at the fourth. And with the ball game tied at 21, we are now going to head into overtime. Great game. It's been a great game, uh, you know, back and forth. Every team, uh, both teams have answered the call when the other team has established a little dominance. The other team, uh, Cambridge, has come right back uh, from uh, being down seven points against the win, made a nice uh, long pass play, tied up the ball game, and, uh, you know, here we are. We're going to go down to man-on-man. Uh, -man from the 10-yard line, and, and we we'll keep going until somebody uh, puts one on the on the board. I would think that this would be an advantage to, to Cambridge simply because they've got a good field goal kicker who can get the ball up and get in there. And uh, this is a situation where if you win the toss, you want to you want to let the other team or you want to play defense first, so you know exactly what you've got to do. And pick and pick uh, pick the wind at your back as possible. Well, I, I think both teams. I don't think that's going to be the argument. They're both going to go. Uh, uh, with the win, uh, you want that, uh, and, and each team, no matter which way, whether you're going into the wind or away uh, with it, uh, the other team gets the same same situation, going the same direction. So uh, I think this definitely is a little bit of an advantage to Cambridge, and if they come second, if they can stop uh, Weathersfield from scoring, uh, and Cambridge is in the same spot, they, they can kick a field goal and, and maybe win this thing. But uh, well, I tell you, it's been a heck of a ball game, and, and uh, it's been a war out there. And uh, I've been impressed with Weatherfield uh, with a uh, th three and three record. Uh, they obviously had some tough losses because they played, they played better than that today. And I was going to say, uh, the rest of the passing here at the end of last night, it looked like Rover was, wasn't even going to get a 
close enough to take a chance to win the ball game, and, and they got a big pass play to Nathan Holt last night, did Rova, and set him up with the situation to try to win a foul incomplete. But uh, now we're in overtime today, so uh, two big ball games. Well, we're looking, we are looking look for pivotal calls and pivotal plays all day, and I hate to say this, but this could be it right here. Who wins the coin toss, and who gets to go first and see what happens here in overtime. So both captains are out on the field, all the captains now, waiting for the coin toss. And we've got some time to go here. And I know uh, Mr. Galley over here working religiously on his stats, trying to, <laughs> trying to get them all figured out for you through the uh, last half of the ball game. Once again, I'd like to thank Mark Guthrie and Travis Fivey, Guthrie Auctioneering and Anwan for letting, uh, letting us use their truck today to stay indoors and bring you the ball game. And right now, it'll be Weathersfield kicking to Cambridge. Yeah, Weathersfield's going to get the ball on... Uh... Oh, Weathersfield's going to get the ball, excuse me. Weatherfield won the coin toss and took the ball. So they're going to score. They want to have a chance to score, score first. I have to tell you, from a coaching standpoint, uh, I want to play defense first. Uh, so I get the ball second. I know exactly what I've got to do. If, if you're down to, uh, you know, fourth and, and five from the five-yard line, you take a field goal and give your other team, your team that you're playing a chance to score a touchdown and beat you, or uh, do you try to score and then, and then get, get beat by a field goal? So, that kind of surprised me that they won, uh, they won the pass and took the ball, but that's exactly what's going to happen here. And uh, Weathersfield's going to get it on the 10-yard line and four chances to get it in. Well, the other, the other thing is, is, is if you take the ball first and you do score, you're going to put pressure on the other team to do it as well. So so there's some logic on that end of it, too, if, if, you're in, uh, if, you, if you like to think on that end of it. But uh, it just depends on your outlook on the ball game. Russ disagrees, but that's what some people think. I'd, I'd like to go with Russ on this one. I'd rather play defense first myself. But uh, this is where it comes in interesting for high school football as the ball is spotted on the 10-yard line. And first play. Oh, it's a fumble as they try to give it to the second man. Throwing Cambridge recovers and it's Cam Jasper with the ball. Well, that makes it pretty simple because now Cambridge is going to get the ball on the 10-yard line and uh, they're going to get four chances to go. Such a cleanly played ball game to have a fumble on the first play of overtime. And Johnson trying to, trying to what he did is fake to the first man. was going to give it to the second man through on the left-hand side and it never got the exchange right as it kind of came off the running back foot, and the ball popped out, and Cambridge jumped on it. Yeah, and, and uh, Johnson's trying to talk the reps in that his knee was down when he fumbled, and uh, they're not buying that, folks. Uh, that, that was just a, a mess up on the handoff and a uh, big pressure situation, and now it's all Cambridge's situation. All they got to do is not mess up, and, uh, you know, obviously with a field goal, field goal at this point will win it for him. And I'm, I'm with Dan on that one, too. Such a cleanly played ball game. Yeah. And then to have that happen, unfortunate, even though it is the Cambridge's advantage. But uh, just an unfortunate that that would happen at that point. So, okay, Skelton down under center now. Everybody in the backfield again. They're going to give it to Jasper going, following two blocks. Looks like he's going to score. Touchdown. And that's it. And the Vikings get the touchdown from Kale Jasper, left-hand side, basically untouched. And that'll do it if Cambridge wins the ball game in overtime. Just two plays run in overtime, one by Weathersfield, a fumble, Cambridge, one play in the end zone, and this is just devastating for the Geese. Uh, and, and exactly right. Look at the kids. Weathersfield's all over the field. They just cannot believe they played four quarters of that kind of football and lost it on two plays. There's, there's Weathersfield kids all over the field just, just crying their hearts out, and, and I have to, I have to uh, feel for them because... They did play a real whale of a game today and deserved a better faith than that. I'm sorry, guys, but Weatherfield's going to be one of the best 1A teams in the state not to make the playoffs. Yes, they exactly. played us as well as anybody yeah. has all year, and they have a lot of athleticism on that team. That was an excellently played ball game by them. So hats off to Weatherfield and Cambridge. Several Cambridge coaches right away going out to the Weatherfield players to tell them good game off of that, too, and, and showing the sportsmanship there. And if that will be the final 27 to 21, the Vikings stay undefeated in the conference and looking to win it now outright. As long as they hold on to win the rest of their ball games, and even if they do lose one in Star County, ties them. Cambridge gets the favor of the tiebreaker. Well, they've, they've won their division uh, clear, clean this time. Uh, they are the conference champions on this division, this side, uh, no matter what happens. They play Anawan and uh, Alwood the last two weeks as does Weathersfield play on the lawn and all that vice versa. And uh, so it, it's uh, you know, just a shame 
said Weatherfield uh, played with such such outstanding games. They did uh, show. <laughs> you know, I'm amazed that uh, they are a three and four team. I just cannot believe that. But an outstanding, uh, outstanding game, and, and to be beat on two plays like that. The first mistake that was made all day on the fumble, and then the big, the big run that they had stopped all day. That power sweep they would stopped all day, but that one went for ten yards and, and uh, uh, touchdown, and that's the game. And, and not to take anything away from Weatherfield, very impressed with their play. That was one of the, the best teams I have seen this year. And But what may have been the Achilles heel from the start of the year was that first loss at the beginning of the season, that very first ball game. Uh, when they lost to Westman 7-6, uh, yeah, that, that, that's the thing that's going to take them out of the playoffs. Uh, they deserve a better faith in what they've got today with the play they made. Uh, just, just a heartbreaker. Uh, and, and they know their season's over and there's still four or five kids over on that side of the field that are down on their knees and just cannot believe that this game is gone as hard as they played and the job they did. And with that, we're going to take a timeout. We'll come back, wrap up the game, go over some stats. You're listening to AM 1500 WGN at 102.5 The Hawk. Enjoy saving seven days a week at Galva and Orient Food Pride. 81% lean ground beef is just 99 cents a pound. Golden ripe dough bananas are 28 cents a pound. Wake up to General Mills Kicks or Cheerios in a 13 to 15 ounce box, two for four dollars. Ready extra large eggs, 59 cents a package. Refreshing our family pop, two for four dollars for a 12 pack. And shaved or sliced ham from our deli is perfect for sandwiches, just a dollar 89 a pound. Shop and save at Galva and Orient Food Pride today. Fertilizer prices are on an upward trend, but Gateway Co-op can help you get the most out of every plant nutrient dollar you spend. One way is to fall apply. Fall applied fertilizer produces better yields and prices are usually lower than the next spring. And Gateway Co-op's fall fertilizer program features great cash discounts or delayed payment option until April 30th, 2001. Don't wait. Call now. Gateway Co-op, Altona, Galva, and Kiwani. The ones you can count on for all your crop production needs this fall. Gateway Co-op, with over 100 years of service to area agriculture. Hey! It was supposed to be a friendly game of touch football. It ended with torn ligaments and a seat on the sidelines. That's pretty hard to deal with when you're as active as I've always been. Even after my leg was supposed to be healed, I could barely walk, much less run. Then a friend told me about advanced rehab services. Has a sports injury left you less than 100%? We're the sports injury specialists at Advanced Rehab Services, and we want to help you with state-of-the-art physical therapy care right here in Kiwani. Our therapists have put high school, college, even professional athletes back on the field. Plus, once you're out of pain, we offer you our playwright program to help you reach your peak performance with less chance of real injury. Come see us for a free pain and injury consultation. Call 853-5500. That's 853-5500. The advanced advantage and playwright. Rehabilitation so powerful, it's the choice of doctors and patients alike. in Cambridge right now uh, with Coach McCree. So he popped right up here with us and uh, good ball game, Coach, wasn't it? Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty fun. I'll tell you what, uh, big plays on, on both sides of the ball and, and both teams just really duking it. I know you told me that before this ball game, but it just never seemed to matter when Weathersfield played Cambridge. You throw any records out, doesn't matter that the teams are both going to come to play each other. Yeah, we knew today, too, Weathersfield, you know, had the situation where they had to win out as far as having a playoff uh, host, and uh, you know, we knew that they'd come out running for us. Uh, as your partner in the booth there said, that, uh, you know, they deserve the better fate. They really played a good ball game. The only mistake they really had was uh, that fumble that we got into overtime, and yeah, we were fortunate to put it in afterwards to give us more money. I was going to say, uh, throughout the whole ball game, it, it seemed like a lot of trouble stopping the Weathersfield run game. Uh, they, they were getting good yardage all day long, and uh, you went into halftime, and I'm, I'm sure tried to make some adjustments coming back out. And uh, here and there, you were able to, to pick and choose and stop them a little bit, but, but what was, uh, I guess, what was the decision made in at halftime? What did you tell your kids? Well, first of all, uh, you know, I did you that change before the game, just before the game started. We ended up, uh, after I talked to you, Decided to try and work on a 5-4 defense to try and be able to cover that pitch on the option that we'd had trouble with with Star Connor the week before in our six um, you know, in front. And <coughs> we're going to try and take a little bit of pressure off our linebackers because whoever's out there on that outside with a ball of breath he is at wing still has to go ahead and, and cover him pass wise as well as go ahead and try and pick up the pitch man in the option if, if they don't throw the ball. 
We were sitting there, we had a pressure on one kid, we were only two deep. We tried to go fast for it to relieve that a little bit. We saw earlier, uh, very early on, that that wasn't going to work, so we went ahead and reverted back to our, our sticks and uh, adjustment lines at half time. We put our guards in a little bit tighter, we tried to have that empty with our middle linebackers. We went ahead and had our tackles play that up, but if they're going to do anything, we got in trouble there, but the first half we did was a penetrate, and they go ahead and run inside tackles where we should have been at the line of scrimmage instead of him being aware to two back. I guess trying to make a stop behind the line of scrimmage, and that's not the way we like to play defense, and we had to go ahead and get those tackles to stay home with anything so we could be inside and try and keep our own attention down the best we could on the quarterback. But, you know, they, they spoke their level of ball game, got a lot of yards on us. I'm sure, you know, the staff will show that, but, well, we put all the wrong And uh, offensively, very similar to what I've seen all year, did, did you did you try to change anything with the offense or just running the basic stuff today as well? I'll tell you what, one thing you got to remember a little bit of that's the ball game is going to keep in mind big play wise for us was that pass play in the fourth quarter, and uh, yeah, we did it against the run, and that's a credit it completely to my assistant coach, Kerry, and so we talked about a couple things we might could do against this defense if we had the throw. Uh, we've never seen that pass before in our lives, but uh, we've seen that they were favored in KL, especially if we had him at Roman with a split. The run would put him in motion, so we went ahead and decided to leave him at a, at a run and leave a tight run, and then what would normally be our three deep pass, so we inverted it with the uh, end of the middle, and normally we'd have to throw that pass off of a play action. But, uh, you know, that was a biggie for us. Give us some more in order to get it tied up again. And, you know, they kept scoring on us, we kept coming back. They kept scoring on us, we kept coming back. And, uh, you know, got into the overtime. And I've always been a defensive-minded coach. And especially when you got a kicker like the FCLS, you know, would prefer to go on defense. You either stop them or you don't. They either go one or two. You know where you're at. You know, after this, you know, a lot of people don't know how to, uh, <coughs> situation works in overtime. You know, exactly the both. You know, team to get the ball on the 10, and you got four plays, you do whatever you can do to get it done. But if they go through plays and, and don't get it done, and, you know, I don't care where you're at yard line wise, you know, are you going to kick the field goal or are you going to go ahead and maybe do four from three or four and, and try and get it in? I think it helps you defensively, you know, if, especially if they got four yards to go in that fourth down situation. And again, you know, even if we didn't force that fumble on that first play, which, you know, ended up being a difference in the ball game, uh, if they would have not scored, you know, we can go in with one three conservative plays, don't get in, keep the ball in the middle field, and we would have kicked like that field, if they take a three for the three, if not, and try it all over again. And uh, I know you want to get in with the players, I'm sure, Coach, but just one more question for you. Uh, I guess, uh, to me, a, a huge play at the end of the ball game was uh, Johnson knocking down the pass, Cambridge throwing it downfield, and instead of intercepting it, and starting with the ball deep there at the end of the fourth quarter, he knocked the ball down, gave you some decent field position. So at least to give you an opportunity to run the clock out, and if you score, go in with the wind, if not, score the overtime. Yeah, Johnson, I you just said there, we do try and preach to those DBs that if we're in a situation where we're in territory deep like that, that you know, make sure you're thinking about whether you should intercept or not. And, and one of the biggest concerns in that situation is, you know, if you try and intercept it, you might tip it up a little bit, catch the ball, you get beat by six points even though you're in position. So, uh, you know, he does a very good job in asking the ball man, like you said, to give us some position to, you know, maybe even score again before the regulation was out. That didn't happen, but uh, well, it was exciting, wasn't it? Yeah, it was definitely exciting. I tell you what, huge for the fans here. I know that they just love this, and it's, it's been just a little while, but it's nice to see Cambridge back in, uh, in front of the Lincoln Trail and office.